Okay, good evening once again and welcome to uh, another gift card readings live with myself, Lady Moonlight, and of course Rio in the background as always. Just letting everybody catch up and then we will get started. But before I wanted to uh, before I do some readings, I also had um, a happy delivery today and as always, um, I get excited when it's a crystal or a happy delivery day and I have to share it with all you lovely people. Hello, hello everyone. So today's reading is gift only readings. My free readings night is a Thursday night for those that like to um, join me on a free readings night. My schedule has changed this week. Um, Monday, Wednesday and Friday are Swan gift readings. Hello, hello, Sandra. Hello, Lu uh, Susan. Yay, Susan's here and Sandra. Let's put Susan and Sandra on tonight's readings list before I forget. Um, Susan and Sandra. So to, if you're not a subscriber, one swan gift gets you a two card reading tonight. If you're a subscriber, you will always get a two card reading free every time I go live. Hello everyone. Hello Michelle. Hello, hello. Good evening everyone. Okay, so we've got Susan and Sandra down already for tonight's readings. So before we start doing some readings tonight, I thought I would share um, some of the goodies that I got today from the, my Hippie store. I love Hippie. It's got everything that um, I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Crystals, um, it's got cards, it's got crystal lights, it's got um, Hippie Gypsy uh, Gothic clothing and footwear and um, decor items and jewellery and you name it. Hippie's got it. And we're also launching another product tonight, um, or between tonight and tomorrow, very, very soon. Watch this space. Um, my lips are sealed until it is launched, but uh, I get excited with um, when Hippie launch new products. But do watch this space. Hello, hello. Okay, so what did I get today in my little package? Well, it's a full moon. This crystal could not have come at a better time with the full worm moon. It is um, my soda light manifesting crystal. And I don't know if I can catch the light in this, but it does have, especially on the back, I think, some little sparkles in there as well, little silver sparkles. I love soda light. Beautiful, beautiful. I don't think this light catches it as much as the sunlight. But this is soda light, and I love that it's got the five point pentacle and it has manifesting written on there. How perfect for a full moon when we do manifest on a full moon. So this couldn't have came at a better time. The other um, thing that I got, which I have cleansed and ready for use tonight, is um, my new card deck. Well, let me just get the box. So this is a box that it came in um, and it is Soul Truth Cards. How beautiful a box is that? So this is the Soul um, Cards set that I will be using tonight, which are these little cards here. So each one has 
a little soul message on there. So I will be shuffling them tonight and um, using them for those that want to choose the soul cards. They are beautiful. They have some really nice um, images on them and messages for the soul to help us on our soul journey. Hello, Diane. Oh, you're just watching tonight. No problem. So I won't put anything on. I won't put your name down on the list then. I love it. Um, Patricia's a bit like that as well. Patricia says um, all the time, she's like, unless I ask for a reading, please don't put me on the list all the time. Give somebody else a chance. But yeah, um, thank you for letting us know. All right. Okay, yep. One thing that uh, Susan is absolutely correct, one thing that I do not tolerate in my lives is negative comments. If you don't like my live, leave. Simple, right? I'm not for everybody and everybody's not for me and I'm good with that. However, please be warned that if you do come into my life and you're rude or you're negative, my moderators will block without even telling you that they're going to do it. We run a peaceful live here. Um, moderators are always moderating and watching the comments. So um, if you want to come in and watch the readings, please feel free to do so. Any disrespect, you will be out of the live. Um, that's the way I roll. I don't do negative. I'm very respectful to everyone and I expect them to be respectful as well. So if you're coming in here to be disrespectful, um, you won't last long. That's all I'm saying to that one. Unfortunately, um, Spirit cannot um, let people know any questions about pregnancy. It's just an unwritten um, rule within the spirit community that they can't... Um, I know a lot of mediums and a lot of spiritual readers do pregnancy questions, etc. Please be very careful about those ones. Um, I've been working with spirit all my life and for many past lives. And I do know that they will not intervene with pregnancy questions. Hello, hello, Viper. Welcome in. Okay, nice to see you again. I recognize your name from yesterday, so lovely to see you. Come on in and take a seat. So, um, we had just been discussing what I had got from my hippie store today because I love sharing all my um, magical goodies. Um, so, this is a manifestation. Um, or manifesting stone, which is soda light crystal, um, that is on my hippie uh, shop just now, and I love it. The energy from this is amazing. Um, so I got that. I also got the um, soul cards as well, which I will be using tonight. The other thing that I got, let me just flick my camera down a little bit so that I can show you. It's this little light here. Now I didn't get the crystal with it. This is my own um, green tiger eye crystal. But I have this um, beautiful uh, light if I just turn it off. So it has seven little lights on here. It's a little light base comes with the remote control so you can turn it on that's pretty bright you can turn it down so you can turn the brightness down um, you can change the colors not that you can see this very so you can go from kind of you can't really see it on this camera but you can go from um, kind of a light to a cream and then of course you can turn the light back up but what I like about this is that you can put a crystal on it and it pretty much lights up the crystal. 
depending on the crystal that obviously that you use. So this is um, my green tiger's eye. I don't know about my little towers. Let me just get one of my... Um, I, don't, I don't know if my towers would work, but if we kind of put the little tower on there, it does work a little bit. Let me just turn this light off a little bit. So we've got the tower. Oh yeah, it does work. We've got the tower there. Then of course when you put it onto the light, it lights up the crystals, which I really, really, let me try my Labradorite. So this is my Labradorite before the light. And then if we put the Labradorite on there, you can see, if we just turn it on the light, you can see it just shines a little bit through the darker ones. But I felt that on for my green tiger's tiger eye, it is beautiful. Whichever way you turn the tiger eye globe, it just has a beautiful glow about it. So these are the light bases. You can get ones that are just the white light or you can get ones that are different colours. I decided to choose the white light um, for my particular crystals. Because um, I've got some clear crystal um, balls as well. So I use them, I use them for the selenite uh, crystals as well. Hello, lady. Hello, hello, Ella. Yep, they are. Anything for luck to dry, uh, to pass a driving test. Um, you can you can um, use um, for luck selenite. Selenite keeps everything um, away that is negative. It keeps pretty positive. You can also um, use labradorite, which is either I've got two labradorites. I've got. Wait a minute. Let me put this light back on. Um, I've got two labradorites. I have this one. And I also have the little um, one here. And I love the Labradorite because it has the little flashes of blue in here. So it kind of flashes blue. Labradorite keeps away negativity. It clears thoughts. Um, it's great for concentration as well. So you can use Labradorite. Um, you can also wear black obsidian to keep away any negatives negative thoughts um just in case you have a negative driver instructor you can wear um black obsidian to make sure that his negativity does not rub off on, rub off on you um the other crystal that you can use is clear quartz clear quartz is fantastic because clear quartz can embody all crystals and um so say like for example, you didn't have an amethyst and you thought, well, what can I use in, in, in place of an amethyst for healing? You can use um, clear quartz. I think I have clear quartz in my um, little box here somewhere. Um, doo -doo, let me have a look. I have got so many crystals in this little box. But I do have clear quartz somewhere in here. Let me just put it up here with some of these. I have got so many crystals. Excuse my witch. My witch has been going off constantly today. It must be the full moon. It must be the full moon. Right, I think 
I may have the um, clear quartz crystal in the other room. But clear quartz crystal is basically just a clear um, quartz crystal, which has the name on the box, obviously. Um, have I got some here? I've got some clear quartz here. But clear quartz is basically um, a clear crystal, just like a crystal ball. But clear quartz can um, cover every single crystal range. Um, it's also good for the third eye and the crown chakra. Yep, tiger's eye too. Yep, tiger's eye is also a good one. I have lot. I've got um, tiger's eye in the. I definitely have tiger's eye in this box. Oops. My tiger eye is definitely in here because I just seen it. Yeah, this is tiger's eye. Um, and tiger's eye is definitely good for luck for driving test as well. Honestly, if you want to try, um, you know, I'm a firm believer in manifestation. Wanting to pass a test or an exam, etc. Give me a second. I need to give this little one a shower because he's obviously wanting a shower. Right, there you go. Otherwise, he's just going to keep jumping in his bath to let me know he needs showers. Right, are you happy now? Right, there you go. All right? There you are. It's obviously his bath time. He has perfect timing. He's, he'll probably still jump in his bath just to be a pest, but hey-ho. Yeah, tiger's eye is beautiful. I do like tiger's eye. Um, I have tiger's eye bracelets. And, yep, yeah, he's going to jump in his bath regardless of his shower. So we'll let him tire himself out. But, yeah, tiger's eye, good one for luck. But manifest the things that you want. That's what I do. If I want something, especially tonight. Tonight is a full moon, right? So if you're putting all your crystals out on the full moon, while you're putting out your crystals on the full moon, manifest what you want. Simply sit out in the moon or sit at the window facing the moon and basically ask the moon. This is what I want. I would like to, or I desire to pass my driving test. Give me the concentration that I need. Then what you do is you imagine yourself sitting the test. And you also, right, Leo, thank you. Right. You're not getting it. I'm not sitting showering you all night. Um, so then you basically um, imagine that you're... Right, you go out of the way. So basically you then imagine that you are... Um, you've already passed your driving test. And then following that, you feel what it's like to actually have that certificate in your hand to say, well done, you have passed your driving test. Keep that feeling inside of you until you've actually passed it. And then you, you will know that manifestation does work. I manifest all the things that I want in life. Are you quite finished? I manifest all the things that I want in life, whether it's luck, whether it's abundance. Excuse this noisy bugger in the, the, the distance. He's obviously wanting attention today. It's the full moon, honestly. Both of my parrots have been playing up all day today. So he will tire himself out eventually. They do. Honestly, this one definitely does. He's obviously having a full moon cleanse. Right. Excuse me. Thank you. 
Up here. Up here. Come on. Up here. Honestly, he knows exactly how to play his mum. But yeah, animals, human beings, full moon affects them all. I used to have um, a, a thing that I never ever did a live reading on a full moon because, well, my witch has gone off constantly today. The two parrots have been playing up left, right and middle court, as you can see. Um, so it could be a pretty um, noisy, but we will see how it goes. He will eventually tire himself out and probably sleep through the whole thing. Excuse me, stop it. Thank you. Alrighty. So, um, let me just check. Did we have any other... Why, good question. Why does the moon affect us? Well, when you think... I love questions like this. When you think about the moon and the moon's energy, right? The moon affects tides, right? So it controls the ebb and flow of oceans. It controls the ebb and flow of large, vast lochs or lakes, etc., it has that power that if it's anything to do with water, hence why this one is deciding he's loving the moon bath. His cage usually sits next to a window where there is moonlight coming in. So he's, the moonlight has probably charged his bath water. So he's deciding he's going to make full use of the full uh, moon water. But then if you look at the human being, right, we look at our structure... We are made up of 80% water. The rest is muscle, bone, um, all of that, right? But 80% of us, our body, is made of water. Right, I'm going to move you back a little bit. I'm going to move you back. 80% um, of us... So, if the moon can control oceans and tides, it can also control human beings. And what we uh, found was, especially when I was working with um, adults with autism, or people that had an imbalance in their brain, they could be the most calmest um, people on this planet. Excuse me, I'm going to really have to um, give him a really good shower. Because he's not going to settle until he's totally wet. So we might as well give him a full shower. We might as well give you a full shower. Right, are you happy now? Honestly, I can't hear myself think now. Um, but yeah, if, if the moon can control tides and water, etc., it makes sense, right, that it can control the human be being and the human being's brain, especially if our brain is mostly water as well, right? So if you imagine if we've got an imbalance in the brain, whether it's a disability, whether um, autism, brain damage, etc. That's going to affect how the moon affects our moods. For females, it can even affect our monthly cycles. So we might find that if our cycles happen to fall on a full moon or round about a full moon, they may be heavier than usual. We may get moody. Some people get, uh, they can be calm for the whole moon cycle until it hits the full moon. And then they get bitchy. Right? And that has nothing to do with PMS. It is pretty much to do with um, the moon cycle. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yay, we have a new subscriber. So unboxed, I'm going to put you on today's readings list. Thank you for subscribing. Okay, so unbox is on tonight's readings list. So some people can sail through a new moon, uh, a full moon, with no problems whatsoever. Some people get really, really extreme migraines or headaches on a full moon, and they absolutely dread the full moon. And as Unbox says, you know, if you're feminine psycho happens to align with the full moon, then you're going to feel it mega time. And I'm sure Unboxed um, will agree with me on that one. Um, but I did, um, you know, I, when I was working as an autism practitioner, looking after adults with autism, there was one lady and I used to say to her, I used to say, if she's going to stay awake all night, it will be on a full moon. And if she's going to misbehave and kick walls and just completely go off the rector scale, it's always on a full moon. And my manager never believed me. Oh, that's poppycock, she used to say, right? So I said, right, OK, let's do a little chart. Prove me wrong. So we'll start on the um, new moon, which is the black moon, working up to the full moon. And we will monitor... Her behavior so we started on the full uh, on the um, new moon and her behavior was not too bad and then throughout the moon cycle again she wasn't too bad two days before the full moon we noticed that she was getting fidgety we noticed that she was getting pretty crabbit nothing you did you know all the usual things that would um, Sorry, I get my hair in my eyes for some reason. Um, all the usual thing that would um, settle her just did not settle her. And then on the night of the full moon, this lady was up all night. She was kicking walls. She was screaming. She was having a tizzy fit. Nothing would settle her. Once the full moon started to ebb, she was absolutely fine. So it depends on in each individual as to how um, the full moon can affect. How can we limit the effect of the full moon? Quite simply, drink more water. When you consider that the moon balances out our water, right? Ebb and flow of the tides. If we're um, dehydrated, we haven't got a lot of, we haven't got the usual supply of water that we need, then that's going to mean that the effects of the moon are going to be even more. So if we want to limit the effects of the moon, especially if we know it affects us, we can drink more water leading up to the new moon. Taking a pinch of Himalayan salt, like a teaspoon of Himalayan salt, and adding it to a glass of water first thing in the morning. And drinking that salt water is going to hydrate each cell of the body far better than just drinking water on its own. So on a full moon, sometimes I just put a teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt or white salt into a glass of water, give it a stir, let the salt dissolve, and then I drink the, the salt water. The minerals in Himalayan salt work very well with our body's cells. And the salt helps the water to penetrate better into our cells, the cells of our body. And it hydrates our skin, our muscle, um, etc. So we're more hydrated than we normally would do. So if you don't drink a lot of water and you really want to hydrate yourself the best that you can, just a teaspoon of Himalayan um, salt in a glass of water first thing in the morning can help massively.
Okay. So that's the answer to that question. Now, because Unboxed is a brand new subscriber, we're going to do um, Unboxed first, then Susan, and then Sandra. Just because, um, let me put this in order, just because she's a brand new subscriber. So, um, unbox every time I go live. If you catch me live, you'll automatically get put on the readings list. So, for unboxed, you can choose any two cards. Um, the two cards that I have tonight are the Magic Unicorn cards. And we also have our um, soul cards, brand new soul cards that I got today. So I decided what better, um, these are um, soul truth. So this gives you messages um, for your own guidance for your own soul type thing. So we've got soul truth and we've also got magic unicorn. Yay! Now, would you like two soul truths or one of each? Yes, you can ask a yes or no question. Okay, two souls. Okay. So, Rina, yes, um... Yes, no questions are free if I can fit them in. So I can do a quick yes, no question before I um, do unboxed reading. So I'm, while I'm waiting on the yes, no question, I'm just going to shuffle the soul cards. And we will pick two soul cards for unboxed. Okay, is that as in regards to a relationship, i.e. does he want a, a serious relationship with you? Is that the question that you would like? I'm just going to shuffle these cards and then I can answer that question before I read the two cards. Okay. All right, okay. Right, is John... Okay, is John your soulmate? We can ask that. Okay, let's ask the board for um, I forget to ask. So this is for Rini. Um, is John... Rina's... Soulmate. Is John Rina's or Rina's soulmate? Is John Rina's soulmate? This one's for Rina. Or Rini. Rina would like to know if John her soulmate. Okay. It's saying maybe, maybe, all right. Um, does John want a serious relationship with Rini? Does John want a serious relationship? Okay, so John wants a serious, John does want a serious relationship with you. As to whether John is a soulmate, spirit are not prepared to say. 
and I can understand that because um, my own personal um, experience with soulmates, twin flames, whatever you want to call them, is that when you meet your soulmate, you just know. Um, I knew when I met my soulmate, um, and we've been together eight and a half years now, that he was definitely, without any question or doubt, my soulmate. And we both knew that within five, ten minutes of meeting each other. We just recognised each other from not just this lifetime, but from a past life. So um, that's probably why the soulmate question was a maybe. It's almost like Spirit is saying, well, if it doesn't feel like a soulmate and you have to ask that question, probably isn't your soulmate. Do they make a good partner? Time will tell. Does he want a serious relationship with you? He obviously does. So I hope that that helps. Yeah, we just, that's, that's what I did for Rini was um, asked, I asked two. I asked about the soulmate and I asked um, whether they were in a serious relationship. Oh, uh, was it Joe or John? All right, so Rini is... Right, okay. All right. Okay, we had two... Que I had two questions, right? Wait a minute. Let me just do that again then. So, unboxed is... For John, right, okay, let's ask that again. That's probably why we got a maybe. Let's do that again for Unboxed. Um, so for Unboxed is John Unboxes Soulmate. This is for Unboxed, is John her soulmate? Okay, again, it came up with the same answer anyway. Um, and I guess that was the same thing was that if you don't, if you're not sure whether John is a soulmate or not, chances are he, he may not be a soulmate. Is he a good partner? Possibly. Soulmate? No. Right? Some people can wait a lifetime and never meet a soulmate, but they have a happy relationship or a, li a happy lifetime relationship. Whether it's a soulmate or a happy lifetime relationship, um, it doesn't really matter. The soulmate is just somebody that you've met in a past life as well as in this life. So we're going to Rina's. Um, Rina's was, um, does Joe want a serious relationship with Rina or Rini? Does Joe want a serious relationship with Rini? And again, it gave the same answer. Yes. Yes, he wants a serious relationship with you. So the answers were pretty much the same anyway, but... Okay, again for the African Queen, it could be a maybe, but we will ask. For African Queen, is African Queen's partner or love of her life, is it her soulmate? African Queen, is her partner her soulmate? This is for African Queen. Again, 
as far as soulmate, it always seems to go to the maybes. And again, it's because chances are if we don't know the answer straight away to that question, then chances are they're not our soulmate. They are just our lifelong partner. Um, the only difference between a lifelong love and a soulmate is a soulmate has travelled life, a past life with you. Whereas um, a lifelong true love has maybe just met you in this, this lifetime. And in the next lifetime, you both maybe meet up again and that then he becomes soulmate. Good night, Diane. Okay, I'm going to do unbox question. Um, I'm going to do the three readings that we have so far. Uh, and then we will answer some more questions. Because we do have three people waiting on readings. So I'm going to do unboxed um, soul cards. So she wanted two soul cards. So spread it, these are for unboxed. What two soul messages do you have for unboxed? Alrighty. So we're going to go with these two. So the first card, the universe wants to ask you, or to ask yourself, am I focused on what I want most? So are you focused on what you want the most? So... It has its own little universal answer on the back. One reason so few of us achieve, uh, so few of us achieve what we truly want is that we never direct our focus. We never concentrate or overpower or concentrate our power. This is so true. This is what I was talking about manifestation. If we want something, we, we can, if we focus on it, we can manifest it. All right? So one answer to, am I focused on what I want most? Are you just saying to the universe, this is what I want, and then leaving at that? Or are you really, really, truly focusing and saying, universe, this is what I desire. I desire to pass the driving test. I desire to get this dream job. And then what you do is you focus your um, mind on seeing yourself getting that um, job or passing that driving test or um, getting more abundance, whatever the question is. So one reason that we don't achieve what we really want is that we seldom very much focus. We just ask it and then forget about it. If you want to manifest it, we have to constantly focus on it. Not just for one day, for one minute. But we have to, every single day until we manifest it, we have to write it down, we have to visualise it. I always say the key path to manifestation is say it, See it in your mind's eye as if it's already happened. Feel it. How would you feel about getting that brand new job? How would you feel about passing that driving test if somebody says, congratulations, you've, te uh, you've passed? How would that make you feel? Imagine you somebody saying to you, you've, you've passed your driving test, you've got this dream job, or you've just received a, a, a windfall of money that's going to clear your debts, etc. How does that make you feel? Hold on to that that feeling. Hold on to the visualization and hold on to the feeling. Focus on it. Keep focusing on it every single day, as much times as you can, um, and it will happen. Um, 
So one reason that we, uh, that few of us achieve what we truly want is that we never direct our focus. We never concentrate our power. Most people dabble their way through life, never really deciding to master anything in particular. So today's um, soul focus for you. What you focus on grows today. Ask yourself, is my life a reflection of my values? Or do I need to make adjustments and prioritise? So focus on what you want and then have a look at the values. What are your values, right? What do you value most? What do you really desire most, right? So we might want a lot of things, right? But we can't be too greedy because the universe will give us nothing. So you need to ask yourself um, what you focus on grows today. Ask yourself, is my life a reflection of my values or do I need to make adjustments? Prioritise what you want the most. Pick one thing that you really, really, truly want to manifest. Stick with it and focus on that one thing. Once that's manifested, you can then move on to the next. A lot of the time, people will give a long list of things to the universe. I want a car, I want a dream house, I want a, a speedboat, I want more money, I want all of it, right? And the universe looks at them as if to say, oh, she, she's not wanting much, right? But if we prioritise and we simply ask for one thing at a time, but also be grateful for the things you have. The universe won't give us anything unless we show gratitude as well. So every day I'll wake up and I'll do a gratitude journal. I have a gratitude journal. And I'll say, I am grateful that I woke up this morning. Many people don't. So I get to live another day, whereas many people aren't that blessed. I am blessed to have food on the table, enough money to buy food, pay our bills and put a roof over our head. I have a family who love me and who are healthy. I have, I have my own health because I live a natural life. And I'm thankful for all of that. Then I go to my manifestation uh, journal. I desire success. I desire spirit to work with me through my readings every day so that I give clear and accurate messages. I desire um, happiness. I desire abundance. I desire joy. And then I feel what that all means or what that all feels like. So if, for example, I was starting a new business, I would say, OK, I desire success with my new business. So I would imagine me having my own brand new business and I would imagine getting all the stock that I needed if I needed to buy stock like crystals, etc., and then I would imagine opening the doors if it was a shop that I was opening, welcoming in my, my customers. And then I would imagine the customers being happy to buy their crystals, their candles, their waxes, whatever, and walking out happy. They're happy. I'm happy. My business is growing. I feel what that um, would feel like. Right. And I hold on to that feeling and I hold on to that vision until such times as I manifest it. Then I give thanks for that manifestation coming true. So that's your first soul card. Thank you for the shares and the follows. All right, so your second card, this is for Unboxed. So the que second question the universe has gave you to ask what do you believe about money what do i believe about money do my beliefs match my dreams so 
if you were asking yourself this question, the question would be, what do I believe about money? And do my beliefs match my dreams? So the answer to this one is, how does your relationship with money affect your current situation? Do you believe you are worthy? Do you believe you are compatible? Do you believe, do you trust money? Does money trust you? Money is an energy. It ebbs and flows. You are worthy of it and it's your responsibility to heal your relationship with money as part of your waking up to the whole of you and your purpose. So, again, how do we relate to money? Right? Do we squander money and then we moan that we have no money left? Are we quite sensible with money in that we jot everything down and we have a list of money coming in, money going out and money left over that we can save? Or do we just randomly figure it out in our head and hope for the best, right? So how good are we with money? Are we sensible that we can save? Or are we just, if I've got money, I'll spend it, right? Some people gamble everything. I used to have a brother-in-law when I was married to my evil ex. And as soon as payday came, he would go on to the bandits and the slot machines and he would blow every single penny of his pay. He lost everything. He lost his house, he lost his wife, he lost his children. All because he gambled every single penny. He had a gambling habit. So his association with money was not um, reflecting what he should be doing. Right? He wasn't responsible with money. He didn't respect money and money didn't respect him. So this card is asking you to think about your own particular relationship with money. Do you um, budget? Do you not budget? Do you save or do you just blow every penny that you have? Right? So give that some thought. So your um, sole action for today regarding this card. Take a deep dive into your belief system around money. Are there any beliefs you need to upgrade to create the results you are wanting most in your life? Write out your money story. It is time for a sacred uh, it's time for a sacred shift. What will your next chapter be? Fill in the blank. I am grateful to money because. So write down on a piece of paper, I am grateful to money because. Or I'm grateful for money because. Why are you grateful for money? Right, that gets us thinking, doesn't it? You know... If I was asking myself that question, why am I grateful for money? I'm grateful for money because without money I couldn't pay for my bills. Couldn't pay for food on the table and I certainly couldn't pay for my um, feather babies to get fed and cleaned out and etc, etc. So money is, um, for me, I'm grateful to have money so that I can do these things. I'm also grateful for money because I can buy extra things with anything extra that I have left over that's going to help me around the home with things that I would probably never be able to do without special visual aids because I am registered blind. So in the past, any extra money that I've had left over, i.e. from my readings or from my healing, etc., I buy things like 10.5 tablets so that I can come live and be able to read some of the comments. I buy large screen 
phones, which are normally pretty expensive. So to get those phones, I have to show up every day and I have to do my readings for the extras. Right, the money that I have out with the readings pays my bills and puts food over, food on the table and a roof over our heads. Whereas the money that I receive from my readings, that's extra for me. And that's for the things that is going to make my life far better. So I have two separate budgets, right? So my um, retirement budge budget, because I'd lost my vision, pays for the food, the bills, etc. And any money that I earn from readings or from my healing helps me to have a little bit of a better um, independent life because I can buy extra magnifiers, I can buy little aids that tell me when my coffee cup is full without overfilling it and possibly scalding myself. Um, and there's so many lovely aids that I would love to get, but again, it's so expensive to get. So I, the money that I earn extra and above helps me to get those things. But to get those things, I have to show up. To get those things, I can't just sit on the sofa and say, well, maybe one day money will just automatically fall, fall into my lap. If you're passionate about something that is going to help you bring in more abundance and bring more money in, then go for it. So think about your relationship with money and how you relate to money. And um, I hope those two soul cards help you out with that. Okay, thank you for the shares and the follows. Okay. So we've done unboxed. Um, we Now, have we got anybody else, Susan? Because I've got um, yourself is next and then Sandra. Do we have any anybody... Other than yourself and Sandra, we've just done Unboxed. Thank you, Unboxed, for subscribing. Um, if you're not already a member of the VIP Facebook group for subscribers, check out my profile. Uh, and if you click on my website and scroll left, you'll see all my social media links. Look for the VIP um, group. Click on that to join. There is a question saying, um, what is your TikTok name? Just put unboxed and I will add you to the group because I will know you're a subscriber. No, Diane didn't want um, a reading because she was just visiting. She, may, she kind of said at the beginning, she's just visiting and doesn't need a reading tonight. So that's fine. All right, so Susan, what two cards would you like? So we do Susan and Sandra. Anyone that's just joining, if you would like a two card reading and you're not a subscriber, one swan gift will get you a two card reading of your choice. If you're a subscriber, every time I go live, whether it's a gift reading or a free reading night, it doesn't matter, you will get two cards free every time I go live. Okay, so Susan, unicorn or soul card? Or one of each? Hello, Eve. I'm sure I just seen Eve coming in. Did I? Or did I just see things? Hello, yes, we saw Eve. Let's put Eve on the list. 
one of each for Susan. So Eve, you are on the readings list. Okay, let's put Eve on the readings list. Now I will put last night's reading on the Lady Moonlight YouTube channel this evening. Um, I haven't had a chance yet to do that. And then providing this has downloaded as well, I will also put that one up on the Lady Moonlight YouTube channel as well. Okay, let's shuffle these cards for Susan and we'll do one of each. Just so that Eve knows, the cards that we've got today are Magic Unicorn cards and Soul Truth. Alright, so let's shuffle the Unicorn cards. Oops. Alrighty. I am good, thank you Eve, I hope you're well. Lovely to see you. It's been um, a full moon tonight and I'm usually hyped up when it's a full moon. I, the full moon gives me ample energy. I think it's because I'm a star seed. <laughs> thank you for the little stars. I think it's because I'm a star seed and the universe is my true home. So when it's a full moon, it's, it's almost like a, a coffee hype. It is just, um, I'm like, poof, I'm awake, I'm wide awake, I'm happy and I'm buzzing. So, yeah. And we got, I had a, um, a delivery day today for my hippie crystal. So, um, this beautiful uh, soda light um, crystal arrived today, which I absolutely love because it has manifesting on it. How cool is that for a full moon? I love the colours in it. Has a few. You can't see it in this light, but it has a few like so. Oh, you can a little bit there. Has a few silver sparkles through it. I love soda light. It's just beautiful. So that came today. Um, if you watch the replay of this live, um, I actually showed all the stuff that I got today. So I was super excited. I love receiving crystals. And the new Soul Truth cards um, that I'm using tonight, they came today. So they were all cleansed and blessed and ready to go tonight. Yay, Susan's found the stickers as well. I love those little um, heart stickers. They are so bright and beautiful, aren't they? Subscribers get access to all these lovely stickers. These um, bright red fun stickers, I love them. Alrighty. Let us pick a card each for Susan. Okay, Spirit, can Susan please have a soul card for helping her with her soul's purpose here on Earth? What does Susan's soul need to know? So let's shuffle these. Okay. So welcome everyone that is just joining us. It is gift only card readings tonight. One swan gift gets you a two card reading. Or if you're a subscriber, you get two cards free every time that I go live. You also get access to Saturday Night Live um, subscriber-only readings. 
and the last Saturday of every month we do um, a free prize draw as well just for subscribers all right Susan uh, freedom of truth is your magic unicorn card freedom of truth communicate honestly and it's time to be who you truly are this is not a time for Susan to be somebody that everybody else wants Susan to be, right? In the past, maybe everybody's wanted Susan to be this, that, or the next thing, right? They've wanted Susan to, to do everything for them and nothing for Susan. It was all about them. It was never about Susan. So the universe is saying to you today, that's that now... That phase now has to end and it has to be all about what Susan needs. Who is Susan? What matters to Susan? What dreams and goals does Susan have? Never mind about anybody else around her, but what dreams and goals does Susan have? I always say when I'm doing my work, I do it with truth and honesty and integrity at all times. Right? I don't sugarcoat nothing. Right? Um, I know some readers tell little small white lies because they don't want to hurt the person that they're reading for. Or they don't want to come across as, well, maybe they don't like that. Or maybe if I say that, they're not going to like that message. Or maybe that message doesn't really mean anything to them. Right? But what they forget is the messages that come through aren't for them. It's for the people that they are reading for. So, of course, it's not going to make sense. You know, if I do a reading for Susan or Sandra or anyone or Eve, right, I don't ask myself, all right, do I understand this message that I'm given? Probably not. Why don't I understand it? Because it's not my message. It's Susan's message or it's Sandra's message. So I say it anyway. And I trust that the messages that I'm getting are accurate from my guides. And they always have been because I've trusted my guides 1000%. Chances are if I ever, ever doubted my spirit guides with their readings, my readings wouldn't be accurate. So believe in, in yourself first and foremost, loving yourself unconditionally. And speak your truth. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with others. If other people don't like your honesty, that's their issue, not Susan's. Right? If you speak your truth and you live a life with truth, honesty and, um, you know, with integrity... The things that you gain from other people are respect and love and trust, right? If somebody comes to you and is brutally honest with you, even though you don't like it, but you know that they are speaking truth, you may not like it, but will you trust that person in the future? Of course you will. Because you know that even though you don't like what they're saying, they are true to themselves and they are true with what they say and how they feel. What if we weren't truthful with them? What if we just said the things that we feel that they need to hear or they want to hear? And then they find out somewhere along the line, oh, wait a minute, Lady Moonlight told us this and that's a whole load of rubbish. Are they ever going to trust Lady Moonlight again? Probably not, right? Because they found out it's pretty much... A load of rubbish. I've been to readers in the past myself. And I've come out and I'm thinking, do you know what, that's a load of crap. You know, I've maybe paid £50, £60 pound for a reading. And the reading has not meant a, so, a single thing to me. They're making it up as I go along, you know. I went to one reader who told me um, I was a grandmother of six. Wow. Well, considering I'm only a grandmother of three, where did the other three go? Must have had them when I was sleeping or whatever, right? And they just, poof, vanished into thin air. 
right? Did that make me trust the reader anymore? No. Did I go back to see that reader again? Hell no, right? Next time I might have 10 that I don't know of. So speaking our truth and our being honest with ourselves and working with truth, honesty and integrity builds trust with other people around us. And we are being true to ourselves as well. And when we're being true to ourselves, we rise our vibration. And we are we connect with people that trust us. I've grown my readings um, customers over the years. It's taken me many years to get um, regular customers. Why is that? One, they need to get to know me. Two, they need to trust me. Right? Um, they, w they will always trust me when I'm saying to them, be careful of scammers, be careful, of, be careful out there of scammed accounts. Especially if they come to me and say, why did you jump in my DM box and ask me for $200 for a reading? My first reply is, one, it wasn't me that jumped into your DM box and asked you for a reading for $200. I never jump into DM boxes and ask for money. In fact, I never jump into DM boxes, period. I don't have to. Neither do I ask for readings. Again, I don't have to. Because I come on live every single night and do readings. Why would I want to jump into your DM box? Money's not an issue for me. I do readings because I love doing them. I was born to read, I was born to heal, I was born to advise, and I was born to teach. It's my life's calling, whatever you want to call it. It has nothing to do with money or finances. But at the same time, you know, you might be thinking, well, why do gift readings? Well, at the end of the day, a gift reading helps with the things that I need in life. I can't work like normal people can because I am registered blind. So I do what I can with the gifts that I have. And also, um, people have the choice. They can um, buy a swan or they can subscribe for £4 or £5 a month. Um, and get free readings all month long. The choice is theirs. Or they can wait to a Thursday night and get a free reading. So, being true to myself and being true to yourself as well, Susan, is the message of this card. Don't live your life for anyone else but you. Be true to you. Live your life for you, not for anybody else. And manifest the things that you want. And always, always, always speak your truth. Even if you feel people don't like it. Speak it anyway. Because people will respect you more for being truthful than they will for being untruthful. Is the message of that card. Hello, Julie. Hello, Loretta. Yay, Loretta is in the building. Let's put Loretta. Emily. All right. Oh, did somebody send a moon? All right, I'm just catching up with... Um, hello, Julie, lovely to see you. Hello, Anne-Marie. Okay. So, um, just before I do your second card, Susan, did I miss somebody? I've got... Yourself just now, I've got Sandra, Eve, and Loretta. Is there anyone else?
Hello, hello. Welcome in. For those that are new here, to get a two-card reading, you would need to gift a swan. Or if you're a subscriber, you get two-card readings free every time that I go live. Um, even if it's a gift night, um, you don't have to gift because you're a subscriber. Okay, so we're up to date. Fantastic. Alrighty. So, Susan, your soul card. The question is, or your question that you should ask yourself, am I willing? Am I willing is, I know it's back to front, but the question is, am I willing? You are on the edge of something great, but can you feel it? Yes, there is risk, uncertainty and imperfections ahead. Failure is almost certain and vulnerability is a requirement. You must be brave and trust yourself more than ever before. You will reach the dream, but you must stretch yourself into a whole new level of belief and willingness in order to move forward with courage. Life is so much full of ups and downs, right? Um, are there going to be disappointments? Probably. Are there going to be good times and bad times? Probably. But how willing are you to live in the moment and actually deal with them head on and believe in yourself and your abilities to be able to overcome any difficulties that come your way. Um, so what is your soul's uh, action for today? Be brave. Follow your heart's compass and lift the lid on your own dreams. Today's mantra, it's possible. Right, so never tell yourself it's this is impossible. Never tell yourself it's not possible to do, or I can't do this, or this is too hard, this is too difficult. Tell yourself it's possible. That's your mantra for today. There is nothing that is impossible. Everything that I need and everything that I, that I desire to make my dreams and goals um, achievable, it's possible. I just need to believe in myself and believe in my dreams and believe in my manifestation because there is nothing that I desire that is not within reach. There is nothing that I desire that is not possible to get. Everything is possible. Nothing is impossible. If we really, really desire something or we really, really want something, we do whatever it takes to get it done, even if we have to think out the box, even if we have to solve a few puzzles along life's way to get it done, we'll get it done because we know if it's in our heart or if it's in our mission or it's in our desire to do so, we will make it possible. But you have to have belief in yourself. So today's mantra, be brave, follow your heart's compass. Lift the lid on your own dreams. Today's mantra, it's, in, it's possible. Not that it's impossible, but it's possible. So every time you doubt yourself, tell yourself it's possible. It's doable. I can do this. I've got this because it's possible. Okay. Hello, hello, hello everyone. So that's Susan's cards. Do we still have Sandra? Because Sandra is next on our list. One of each for Sandra. Let's do one of each for Sandra. I love these soul cards. The soul cards are just new today. So they have been cleansed and blessed, ready to go. 
Um, but I love it because it works with our, it, it actually asks us our very soul um, questions that we might not normally ask ourselves. So the universe is um, helping us to ask our soul, what is our soul's purpose? What does, what does our soul need to do? What questions should we ask our soul in order to move forward in life? This is why those cards are called Soul's Truth. I absolutely love them. I just think the energy in them is fantastic. All right, so one has just come out of the deck for the unicorn, so we're going to go with that one. And let's shuffle the Soul Truth ones and see what cards the Soul Truth come out with today oops okay there we go we have a flying soul truth card let me just go grab that one because that one certainly um it is a full moon so things i was expecting cards to fly tonight cards always fly on a full moon we never know what's going to happen on a full moon Evening all. Hello, hello. Okay. Here's Capello. Hello, here's Capello. Let me just... Was it Inez? Oh, sorry, Inez. Hello, Inez. Let me put you on the list. Okay, so we've got Inez... On tonight's list as well because Inez has subscribed okay all right is it Dr Sunshine Fire all oh, right okay Dr Sunshine <laughs> have you got a new name <laughs> she's sneaking in on us right I'm just going to put Dr. Sunshine Fire then. Right. Dr. Sunshine Fire. <laughs> She's sneaking in. All right. You're on the list. So you're after Loretta. So we've got, uh, we're just doing Sandra's just now. Then we're doing Eve, Loretta, and then Dr. Sunshine Fire. Okay, so Sandra, your unicorn card, rose gold cosmic pool. So I'm going to start with that one first and then we'll do your soul's truth one. Breathe in cosmic love and soak up wisdom. And this is where the cosmic um, pool lies, rose gold cosmic pool. Rose gold, bright gold or white gold is universal um, energy. Whenever I'm wanting to put protection around me, especially if I'm around a lot of negative people, I pull down this rose gold golden light and then I spread that light out all around me and underneath me so that I'm cocooned in a huge large um, radiant ball. While I'm in that radiant ball, nothing negative can penetrate that ball or my aura or even affect my mood or affect my energy. Once I've got rid of the negative people in my life, then I can pull down that ball. But while I'm around negative people, that ball is my golden light that that ball is my protective light and we can all do that we can all pull down that golden light when we need um protection but whilst we're in that universal golden light we can always pull in knowledge as well whenever i meditate 
I, I pull down my golden light for protection and I sit in that ball of golden light and I shut off from the rest of the world and I close down my human brain and I enter the meditation state which is um, our subconscious brain. Within that meditation, within that subconscious space, within that sacred space is where you will gain knowledge, is where you can speak to your guides, gods, angels, goddesses, right? We can't do it within the human brain. The human brain is just so fixated on um, the matrix. We need to get into our sacred space, whatever that sacred space may be. You might have a sacred room like I have. This is our spiritual room. So the only um, time we use this is if um, I'm doing readings or uh, we have the large dining table here. So if we have guests, we have our dinner around here as well. Um, I do all my healing from here, all of my spiritual work, whether it's spells, whether it's mixing herbs, whatever it is, it, this is my sacred space. It's also my fiancé's sacred space when he needs it as well. So creating your own sacred space can also help. Whether it's, a, whether it's just a corner of a room, you might have a, a space in your garden that you can call your own, a place where you can just sit out and connect with nature. If I'm walking the woods, I have a certain area in the woods that I love to sit and just meditate. That's also my outside sacred space. So your sacred, you can build your sacred space anywhere you like. It could be in your room, it could be outside, it could be in the woods, it could be on the beach, it could be sitting on a park bench. Wherever you want your sacred space to be, wherever your space is, one, it has to be a space where you're not going to be disturbed, right? Because you don't want to enter into that sacred space, i.e. meditation, etc., and somebody walks in the do door and disturbs you. Right, so it needs to be a space where you won't be disturbed. My fiance knows that when I'm in here doing readings, he never comes in. If I'm in here doing meditation, he never comes in. Right, um, we don't have phones in here, we don't have um, computers. If I'm doing meditation, my tablet, etc., is always kept in the living room. So um, all of that is so important. So that your card is saying, breathe in that sacred light. Spend time meditating. Spend time out with the busy world that we live in. Disconnect from the human brain and connect with the subconscious. It's only when we connect with the subconscious mind that we enter that sacred space. And within that sacred space, we can connect to our guides, we can connect to our angels, we can connect to our gods and goddesses. And this is also the space where we can gather knowledge as well. So if I want something, or I want to know something from my guides, I go into my sacred space and I meditate and I ask the question. If I want something from my gods or goddesses, again, I go into my sacred space. All the answers are within that sacred space. But you need to be able to create your own individual sacred space, a space that you can call your own. And it might not even need to be the whole room. It could just be a small corner of the room. At the end of this room, or just behind little Rio here, I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can find it somewhere. Oh, it's the other side, I think. It's this side. What is it? Well, it's just behind Rio. You can't maybe see it. But I have my altar right behind Rio with my gods and goddesses on it. Um, and that is my sacred space. You might even see my Bessam. Yep, you can just see my Bessam just over here. 
that's my broom. So my broom sits um, in that sacred space. So my altar is my sacred space. So if I'm doing my spells or if I'm doing my meditation, I, I will simply put on my um, sacred robe and I will do my meditation and I will connect. That is my space, that is my sacred space, my sacred time. Um, and it's important that everybody finds a little bit of their own sacred space. And everyone, if they want to connect spiritually, should create their own sacred space and meditate at least once a day, if not twice. I meditate last thing at night and first thing in the morning. If I feel stressed throughout the day, I meditate to relieve that stress. So there is no, I can never say, okay, today I'm going to meditate two or three times. I might meditate two times and never need to meditate during the day because everything is running just fine. There may be days when everything seems to come at me all at once. I may need about 20 meditations or 20 mini meditations in that day just to stop myself from strangling somebody. <laughs> <laughs> right so um whatever it takes to keep me on an up and even keel that's what i'll do so what about our soul card hello everyone so the soul card and the question that the universe wants you to ask your soul. What am I grateful for right now? Ask your soul, what am I grateful for right now? Right in this moment. Right in this moment of time. What am I grateful for? What, am I, what is my gratitude? What am I grateful for? Adopt an abundant mindset. Gratitude is the antidote to all of our problems. It is impossible to be fearful and grateful at the same time. Gratitude improves our health. It opens our heart and changes our state. Exactly what I was saying earlier on in a previous reading. We can't manifest anything in our life unless we are grateful for the things that we already have. It all starts with self-love, yes, and it starts with gratitude, right? Half the time, many people don't ask this question, what am I grateful for? They are too busy in the matrix. The matrix teaches us to want, want, want. I want more money, I want better health, I want the medication because the medication will make me better because that's what the pharmacist, pharmacy tells me. And I want all of this, I want to be rich, I want to be famous, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. Nowhere in that I want, I want, I want is there I am grateful for. Right? Very seldom people do that. But every day when I wake up, I'll do my dream journal first and foremost, and then I'll do my gratitude journal. What am I grateful for today? Well, I'm grateful I opened my eyes today. I get to live another day. There are so many people that can't. So many people went to their bed last night and didn't wake up today. So I'm grateful that I woke up today. I'm grateful to have money to put food on the table to put clothes on my back, to put a roof over mine and my fiancé's head, to give security to our pets. I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful to have my partner in my life because he helps me with my disability. He's my eyes when I cannot see. And he's my inspiration when I have moments where I doubt myself. So I'm grateful for him. I'm grateful for my grandchildren, even though I haven't seen them in over a year. I'm still grateful that I'm a gran. 
and I'm grateful that I had the time with them before their parents took them away from me. And I know that they will come back one day, but until then I am grateful that I had that time with them. So being grateful every single day, having a gratitude journal every single day keeps you grounded and raises your vibration. And if you're grateful for the things you already have, the universe will give you more of what you don't have and more of what you desire because the way that the universe sees it is, well, Lady Moonlight's grateful for the things that she doesn't have, like her grandchildren. She, she doesn't have them in her life, but she's grateful that she's a grand anyway. She's grateful that she's alive and she's living every moment the best she can. She's grateful for her health, etc., etc. So we're going to give her better health. We're going to give her the knowledge from her guides, etc., etc., to be more abundant. And we're going to give her X, Y, and Z. It starts with gratitude. So what's your soul's um, action for the day? The universe law of attraction says that we attract into our lives that on which we are focused. Close your eyes. Put your hand on your heart and think of three things for which you are grateful for today. Just three things. Notice the abundance growing within you. So just simply placing your hand on your heart and saying, I am grateful for the money that I have to put on the table, to feed us, to clothe us, and to give us a roof over our head. I'm grateful for today. I get to live today. Many other people didn't. I'm grateful for all of the joy, all my friends, all, my, all the people that support me. I'm grateful for all of that. And say it like you mean it, right? There's no point in say it half-heartedly saying it and not believing in that grateful. If you're not grateful for it, don't say it. Only say three things every day that you are grateful for, that you are truly grateful for. And while you've got your hand on your heart and you're closing your eyes and you're telling yourself, I'm grateful for abundance, I'm grateful for being alive, I'm grateful for my health, Pay attention to how your body feels. Does it feel negative? Or does it feel positive? Oozing with abundance, oozing with love. If you're being, if you're being true to yourself and you're, telling your, you're asking your soul, what is it that I am grateful for today? You will feel abundance. You will feel positivity. And you will feel that there is nothing in this universe that you cannot achieve. There's no, no, no goals that you cannot manifest. Okay. So, I hope that that helped, Sandra. Beautiful, beautiful cards. I am absolutely loving the Soul Truth cards. It just speaks. They are such an inspiration. I'm so glad um, they came today on the full moon as well. So I'm just checking in with Susan. Susan, I've got Eve, Loretta and Dr. Sunshine Fire. Is there anyone I've missed? I'm just going to check my list as well. Just to see if we've got anybody else that I have, uh, I have forgotten. Yeah, exactly. It is, isn't it? You know, I always use my left hand. When I'm putting my hand on my heart, I'm always use, I always use my left hand. So if I put my hand on my heart to manifest and I'll say I'm grateful for being alive today. I'm grateful 
for having enough money to pay my bills, to put roof over my head, um, to feed us, to clothe us. I'm grateful for my family. There's three things. And while I'm doing it, you can feel that ooze of abundance. That's just a feeling. You can't even describe it. But when you feel it, why shouldn't you do that every day? Right? M millions and millions of people wake up every day and they go through their day-to-day -day lives. Not once do they say, I am grateful for X, Y, and Z. Not once. Right? I know, for example, my ex never ever woke up to say, I am grateful for um, this, that, or the next thing. Right? In his opinion, he was materialistic and it was a case of, I want, I want, I want, I want. And I don't care who I'm going to step on or, or use or abuse to get there. Was he ever abundant? Was he ever, uh, did he ever get the material wealth that he wanted? No. Why? Because he missed the most vital ingredient. Well, two vital ingredients. First and foremost, he lost out on self-love. If you don't love yourself unconditionally and speak your own truth and live your own path for you and nobody else then you're not giving, living your best life. And gratitude. Being grateful every single day. And even if it's just three things every day that you want to be grateful for. I love the number seven, so I always have seven things. So every day I will write down seven things that I'm grateful for. And then tomorrow I'll do the same. Seven things that I'm grateful for for that day and when you do that you see the abundance coming right the when you're grateful and the universe sees that you're grateful for the things that you already have the universe blesses you with more but if all the universe is seeing is I want I want I want I want I want and it doesn't even hear one word of I am grateful for not going to help us out any way, shape or form until we start to learn the lesson of gratitude. And that's what today's soul card was for Sandra. Beautiful, beautiful card. Okay, so we've got Eve next. Eve, what two cards would you like? Hello, Leah. Let's put Leah on the list as well. Lovely to see you, Leah. One of each for Eve as well. Yep, left-handed. Left-hand side of us, we have a spiritual side of our brain. And we have a non-spiritual side of our brain, right? So the left-hand side is our spiritual side. So as a healer, if I'm sending out healing, I send healing out with my left. And I take away any toxins from the person that I'm healing with my right. So healing goes in with the left and toxins come out with the right, right? So every time I'm doing spiritual work, I'm left-handed. So when I'm shuffling and I'm picking my cards, you will often see me hold the cards with my left hand. Now and again, I will use my right if I'm using my pen with the left. But they do say that um, spiritual people naturally are left-handed. Way back, um, many, many years ago, I'm going to shuffle Eve's cards while I'm talking. Way back many years ago, um, I remember my mom telling me about her school days. And, of course, in the school that she did, they had um, assemblies and it was pretty much quite religious. Um, you know, they would go into assembly and have hymns, etc., etc. And... If you were right-handed, 
the teacher if the teacher saw you writing with your right hand she would um belt take the belt out and she would belt the le your right hand to t uh, your left hand sorry so that you would write with your right hand and it was because back in the day especially in the burning times right a lot of witches were left-handed right a lot of native americans were left-handed so they knew they were spiritual or they knew that they were well a lot of christians especially the roman catholic church deemed left-handed people as witches demon worshippers devil worshippers right so one way that they wanted to try and chase out the devil was to insist that these people work with their right hand so if they seen them using their left they would they would um use the leather belt to belt their right hand their left hand so that they had no choice but to remember to use their right hand so a lot of people back then were right-handed um, because the fear of getting belted if they used the left hand, etc. Um, and it still holds true today. A lot of spiritual people are left-handed. And it's because our left side is our spiritual side. So when you connect more, you might be right-handed, but then when you start learning and connecting on a spiritual path, you might find that you automatically switch to your left hand to do things. Hello, Natasha. Yeah, very true. Um, my mum said many a time she would get the belt because she was left-handed. And... When she grew into adulthood, of course, she she um, was so used to being forced to write with her right hand. She was, for the rest of her life, she was right-handed. But initially, she was left-handed until she went to school. Um, now, luckily, schools aren't quite so strict. Um, and uh, back here, back in the UK... Um, the belt or corporal punishment in schools was banned. Um, so, because, like anything else, some teachers went too far with the corporal punishment and children were getting harmed with leather belts or if, uh, some teachers used canes, which was pretty much worse. Um, my mum says she used to come home and her hands were red raw with being belted um, by the teacher. But um, she said, you know, the, the parents would say, well, moral of the story, use your right hand and you won't get belted. Uh, my mum used to say as well, uh, the teacher didn't need to shout. She just, it, back then, for the blackboards, it was these big wooden dusters. And if... A child was disruptive in the class. The teacher just threw this duster. And if he didn't duck, if that duster hit you, whether you did something or wrong, or wrong or not, it didn't matter. If the duster walloped you, you got walloped. So my mum used to say, every time she picked up the duster to chuck it, everybody ducked. And the last one to duck usually got hit with a duster. Even if they weren't the one that did it wrong. So my mum told us lots of horror stories, but true stories nevertheless. Um, so I'm kind of glad. <laughs> in my day, the corporal punishment was kind of uh, abolished over here in the UK. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's just absolutely crazy. Some people can actually write with both hands. They can write with both their left and their right. If I try and write with my right hand, I'm a terrible writer. <laughs> uh, I do everything with my left hand. 
So I would have probably been one of those children in the past that got uh, <laughs> either belted or caned across the hand. Um, so I'm kind of glad by the time I went to school that act was kind of abolished. But yeah, very true stories. Alrighty. But then when you look into the Victorian ages and some of the punishment, corporal punishments and stuff that went on even in the Victorian era, it was pretty brutal. You know, they had, um, you know, they didn't have any lie detectors. They had one of these boards that stretched you until you told the truth. So if, you, if they felt you were lying, they would tie your hands and your hands to a board at the top and your feet to a board at the bottom. And they would pull the boards apart and basically stretch you until you couldn't, um, pretty much until you couldn't resist. And probably at that particular time, even though you, even if you were telling the truth, you would probably tell them what they wanted to hear just to stop the pain. Brutal punishment back in those days. Um, also, when my mum did, my, the, one of the first jobs that my mum had was in a rope factory. And I was quite curious and I, was, I would say to her, oh, so was it ropes for fishing and think fishing boats, etc.? Nope. She made ropes for the hangman's noose. So every rope she made, she knew somebody at some point in time would be hanging from that rope. Quite a daunting um, thought when you're making rope that you know that um, at some point somebody's going to be hanging from it. But that was her very first job many years ago was um, weaving the, the rope that um, hung the bodies. It is. Hello, Kelly. Yeah, exactly. Depending on what happens in our life can determine what happens even with our left and our right hand, etc. So it, it, it really is. It's, it's pretty... Pretty life um, is pretty horrific, but yeah, back here in the UK, Loretta, in Victorian eras, it was pretty brutal. Children were made to work as early as five, six, seven year old. They were put, you know, they were born into these mills, and children had to work twelve, fifteen hours a day in the mills. Many of them got dust in their lungs which caused health issues etc it was basically back then child labor there was just so much things um if a family was poor they went to the poor house and um they had to work in these mills um and they lived and breathed in those mills um and they were basically fed bread and gruel so it might be cabbage water with bread or it was just, Ill, it, it wasn't nutritious food. The mill owners would just basically buy cheap food in, um, enough to keep them alive or, uh, and going. Um, so yeah, the Victorian era, um, for the poor anyway, uh, was a terrible time to be living in. All right, so we're going to um, read Eve's card. Then we've got Loretta. Then we've got Dr. Sunshine Flower. And then we've got Leah. <coughs> so your unicorn card, enlightenment. So look from the highest perspective and see the divine in everyone. Look from the highest perspective and see the divine in absolutely everyone. 
even our enemies, even those that do us wrong, whether it's narcissistic people, whether it's bullies, whether it's controlling, it's easy to hate them. It's easy to say, I'm not going to forgive them. It's easy to say, I absolutely, I'm never going to speak to them, whatever, I, you know, and I, I condemn them to hell and all the rest of it. Right? That's so easy to do and it's so easy to say. But when we look at the higher perspective, right, and we think outside the box, we kind of think, right, okay, why would, for example, in my own case, why was my ex a narcissist? Well, I know through 30 years of living with him, his dad was a narcissist. His dad was a child abuser. So where did my ex learn things from? He learned them from his parents. Right? So he adored his dad. So his dad passed on the abuse to him. Then he passed on his abuse to his daughter and to his grandchildren. So abuse led to abuse led to abuse. So knowing that, could I wholeheartedly completely blame my ex for everything that he did and say the buck laid squarely with him? I could, right? But I didn't. Because I knew that it stemmed further back than that. Same with bullies. Bullies may have been bullied themselves when they were younger. Or their parents may have bullied them. And that's all they know. And if that's all you know, then it passes on and you then become the bully. Right? And it's only... When we find a way of breaking free from that, that we actually see the full s story and we kind of think, right, okay. You know, um, for example, I have three grandchildren. Now, their mom was a child abuser and still is. One of my grandchildren has learning difficulties. So sadly, she was drawn into the, abu the world of the abuse and she saw abuse as love. But my other two granddaughters, because they spent many years with me, I was able to teach them the difference between abuse and love. And they preferred to come and see their gran rather than be with their mum and dad who were abusing them. I have no doubt whatsoever, even though I'm, I no longer see my grandchildren, I have no doubt whatsoever that everything that I taught those two girls, they will remember and they will come back when they're old enough to leave their parents. And their parents stopping them from seeing me is the worst thing that they could do because in the future, it's them that's going to lose their children because their children are going to come and spend more time with their gran than they are with their, their own parents because gran taught them right from wrong, the parents didn't. So when we look at the um, other side of the picture, it makes it a little bit easier for us to say, well, do you know what? That person taught me the type of person I don't want to be. That person taught me to recognise a bully, to recognise an abuser, so that in the future I stayed away from bullies and I stayed away from abusers and narcissists. So I was more able to say thank you for teaching me that. And because they taught me that lesson, it made it more easier for me to say, I forgive you. Because in saying that I forgive you, I take away the emotional control that they have on me, even though they weren't in my life anymore. If I held a grudge and I was not going to forgive them, I was taking that um, emotional abuse with me and carrying it through into my present and my future. I was not prepared to do that. And there comes a time when you realise, OK, what did... Instead of hating this man, what did this man teach me? Taught me how to recognise an abuser and a narcissist. 
What did the people that bullied me when I was at school teach me? I can tell them that uh, I can tell a bully from a mile away, and I will um, never ever be abused or controlled by anyone. So thank you for that lesson, because you've taught me that lesson. I'm now going to erase you from my mind by saying I forgive you. And I'll leave you with whatever the universal karma decides to give you. And I walk on with my own life. So this is what enlightenment's about. is looking for the high perspective. See the divine in everyone. See the reason why people act the way they do. We're not there to judge them. That's karma's job. That's the universe's job to show them the errors of their way. That's not for us to do that. But what we can do is we can lead the way by shining our own light, by teaching love, not hate, by teaching respect, not disrespect, by speaking our truth, not untruth, and by surrounding ourselves with positive, uplifting people rather than negative people who are just going to drain our energy. It also teaches us as well to be a little bit more forgiving, even to our enemies, because in forgiveness we can find our own freedom. So the universe is asking you to look outside the box, anyone that's hurt you in the past, ask yourself, what made them turn to being that person? What was going on in their lives before they met you? What was going on, you know, what were their parents like? What were their family like? What, their, what were their friends at school like? Excuse me. Thank you. So, whatever it is, um, find the reason for their behaviour. When you find the reason for their behaviour, you realise that their behaviour stems from something deeper. Can we completely 100% blame them for everything that they do? No. We have to look further back. And then when we find that, we then have to say, okay, what did that teach me? Well, that taught me never ever to trust anybody like that again. I won't hate them because of the person that they are, Somewhere along the line, the universe will teach them that lesson itself, or karma will, one of the two. In the meantime, I can forgive them, I can set myself free from them, and carry on living my life, the best life that I can. So I hope that that has meaning for you for that particular card. Thank you for the gifts, everyone. They are so appreciated. Thank you. Hello, hello to everyone. Unfortunately, the questions uh, about pregnancy, Spirit will not answer pregnancy questions. It's just an unwritten law. It's just because pregnancy can be so complicated in some cases, Spirit just refused to say yes, no to pregnancy. Or, you know, I get a lot of questions saying, um, will I conceive this year? Will I fall pregnant? Will I have a healthy child? What is the birth of my unborn child, etc.? Spirit will not answer any of those questions. Um, it's just an unwritten law. I will um, do some yes, no questions in a little while once I get down the readings list a little bit. So Eve's soul question, the question that the universe is asking you today to ask your soul, am I getting enough rest to restore my energy and, for full, and fully show up in my life? Am I getting enough rest to restore my energy and fully show up? To my life is the question that um, we ask, that you need to ask your soul. You are the asset. This body is your vehicle. Notice how your body is feeling. How much sleep are you getting? 
And what can you do to help your body to rest? Do you know what? This is so true. Many of us are so dependent on pharmaceutical medicines, etc. If we feel ill, etc., right? It must be something that is lacking in us and I need a pill to fix it. Right? I need somebody else to tell me what's wrong with my own body. But our bodies can tell us ourselves what is wrong with our body. If we're tired, our body is telling us we need more sleep. If we're energetic, our body is probably saying we need to calm down a little peg or two. Right? Maybe not eat so much sugar. It's our bodies, our vehicles, right? If we own a car, right, and you fill that car up with petrol and you give it an oil check and you give it an MOT and it runs really, really smoothly for many, many miles. And then all of a sudden it just conks out. And you find, all right, what, why did this um, car just conk out on me? I need to get a pickup truck and I need to go and take it to the garage to see what's wrong with it and you take it to the garage and the garage says well it's ran out of petrol would you like me to fill her up right sometimes the answers are right in front of our nose our vehicle can tell us what's wrong with us if we get migraines what are we stressing about how can we limit that stress if we are tired Maybe we're overworking. Maybe we're overstressed. Maybe we're getting lack of sleep. We're maybe only getting three or four hours sleep instead of getting the maximum eight hours of sleep that our bodies need every day. Many people, when I was working, were saying, oh, I only need four hours of sleep a day. I survive on four hours sleep and I feel just great. And then a month later, they're off sick. Not so great now, right? Because that lack of sleep eventually catches up and the body says, I can't cope anymore. And sickness comes in. So when you're asking your soul, am I getting enough rest to restore my energy? Because without rest, we are basically running on empty, right? So have I got enough fuel in my tank to keep me going? Or am I going to run out of juice? Right? Um, and fully show up in my life. Well, if you don't put petrol in your car, you're not going to get to A to B. Right? So to get to A to B, you need to put fuel in your car. You need to put oil to stop the joints or, or the, the, the parts from grinding. You need brake fluid to stop um, the brakes from burning out. Right? So you need a health check, right? You need an MOT. Well, so does our bodies. Our body is the only vehicle we have in this life. We can't trade it in for a new one like we can a car if, it, if something goes wrong, right? This is what we are born in. This is, this is it, right? And how we treat our vehicle is going to reflect on how our vehicle reacts. So if we don't give it the right fuel, it's going to crash. If we don't um, get enough rest, it's going to burn out. Right? It's like not putting brake fluid in or, or petrol in your tank and you're just running on air. Eventually you're going to eventually you're going to burn out. So we must treat we love our cars, we love our vehicles. Shouldn't we love our own vehicle as well? Shouldn't we love and respect our own bodies and look after our own bodies the best that we can? Don't we owe that to ourselves? Um, so what is the action that you need? What is your soul's action for the day? Take a bath. Put on some lavender essential oil or some other oils. Go to bed ridiculously early. Or give yourself a time out today. Notice how your body is thanking you. 
Today's mantra, the more I give myself permission to rest, the more I can contribute. And you know, that is so, so true. Um, I used to do 24-hour shifts when I was a carer. So I would work round the clock for 24 hours without any sleep. Right? Um, that was a long haul. Then I would go home and I would still make the dinner, do all the things that I needed to do as a, a housewife back then. And I would still go to my bed at the right the, the same time, which meant I got less sleep. And then by the end of the week, by the time I'd done a few other 24-hour shifts, I was absolutely shattered. And when I did have a day off, I spent most of the day sleeping because that's what my body needed. I was absolutely wiped out because I was doing four 24-hour shifts a week and maybe getting one or two days a week off in between times. And I still had to run the household, I still had to look after the kids, get the kids to school, etc, etc. So a lot of the time I was running on empty until my body started showing signs of stress. I started getting migraines, I started being tired all the time, I started being lethargic. I would eat sugary foods to get extra energy, I would be drinking coffee by the bucket. You name it to start, try and stay awake, right? So it was constant burnout all the time. So we shouldn't do that. We should listen to our bodies. What is our bodies telling us, right? Is our bodies telling us we need sleep? Well, if it does, go to bed ridiculously early, right? Sometimes um, when I am totally, total, I know not to let myself get stressed because if I get myself stressed, I can be awake for like two days in a row without any sleep because I just get totally stressed out and when I do sleep I can easily easily sleep for 12 hours because my body is saying all right I am absolutely pooped and I need to catch up on the sleep that I've already lost so I can quite easily fall asleep and wake up 12 hours later if I've missed a lot of sleep I don't kick myself for it because I know that that's what my body needs at that particular time. So how can I avoid that? By making sure I take some rest, to make, to make sure that I'm getting at least eight hours sleep a day. And if I can't, for whatever reason, get eight hours sleep a day, I can make up for it by having short naps throughout the day as well. Either way, listening to my body, making sure that I'm giving my body the right amount of rest that it needs. So today's mantra, tell yourself, the more I give my permission, the more I give myself permission to rest, the more I can contribute. So I hope that has meaning for you, Eve. I love these um, new soul cards. Okay, hello everyone that has come in and that I have just missed. Oh, I'm so glad it helped. I don't know what everybody is thinking about these new soul cards. Um, it's the first time I've used them today um, because they only arrived today from my hippie store. So um, anybody that's a card reader... I do highly recommend um, this card deck. It is amazing. And it's um, the, the deck itself is called Soul Truth. But it is basically your guides asking you to speak to your soul. All the answers are within us. Sometimes we forget to speak to our soul. Sometimes we forget to say, okay, what is it that I need to know? What is the answer? And these cards are absolutely fantastic for that. So, Eve, I'm so glad that those cards helped. Okay, so we got Loretta, Dr. Sunshine Fire and Leah. Have I missed anyone out, Susan?
So while I'm catching up with Susan Loretta, what two cards would you like? Thank you for the like, Bluebell. Thank you for the gifts, the likes and the follows, everyone. Okay, two soul cards for Loretta. Let's pick two souls. These soul cards are beautiful. I absolutely love them. Yay, Soul Truth cards. They are absolutely stunning cards. I'm so glad I got these. I was drawn when I seen them um, on the Hippie Life. Hippie Life did a, a live sale not so long ago and I was watching all the crystals and stuff. And one of the crystals that drew me was the Manifestation crystals. How beautiful are they? I believe they still have some of these in the sale, so if anyone is interested, let me know and I can uh, see if they're still available. But this is Soda Light. It's a Soda Light crystal and it has the uh, manifestation engraved in it. But I also got the um, Soul cards. I don't know if I've got the box down here to show you the box for the cards, but Hippie do the Soul Truth cards come in a little box like that so I have got a post on my Facebook group and I think I've got a post on um, TikTok as well with these cards in it um, but they are if you're wanting to work more on your soul journey um, I highly recommend the soul truth cards they are beautiful they are small kind of just to sit in the palm of your hands they're not a big deck um, but they are beautiful cards to work with. Absolutely love the Soul Truth cards. All right, so let's shuffle these Soul Truth cards and give Loretta two of these beautiful cards. Oh, bless. Well, the full moon may have a lot to do with that because it is the full um, worm moon today. And it hits everybody differently. When it's a full moon, I am full of beans. Honestly, I could I could bounce off. I'm like a tigger on springs. I could basically bounce off every wall. Full moons always energize me. I think it's the star seed in me. I'm a universal child, so anything connected with the universe, sun, moon, stars, etc. So when it's a full moon, I'm like, ding, I'm awake. So, and I'm usually pretty hype as well on a full moon. Usually, well, I'm positive most days anyway because I don't deal with negativity. I kind of just... I kick negativity out and stay positive. Oh, bless. Oh, isn't that brilliant? Yep, if you, if you're Energy is like Tigger and you bounce off every single wall when it's a full moon. Yep, that's what it is. Your, your, the moon energy gives you this overwhelming boost of energy. Most star seeds feel that. Most light workers, star seeds, etc. Um, souls that are connected more to the universe than the earth. They, when it's a full moon, we could almost just fly. It, it just energizes us it's like it's it's like taking like 20 cans of the red bull which is well red bull is so bad for you but um you know give me uh, a full moon anytime one it's healthier for you and two 
a full moon, I'm always wide awake. Some people on a full moon get headaches because the energy is just way too strong for them. Some people get grouchy. Some women, their cycles get really, really heavy at this time of the, when it's a full moon, etc. Um, so it can cause issues with that as well. So the full moon treats everybody. Yeah, if you're a witch, you're going to be affected by the moon because the witches work with earth, air, fire and water. They work with the cycles of the sun, the moon, the universe. Witches are healers, universal healers and seers and givers. So, yes, we are very much um, influenced by the moon. Okay. If I'm, lo if I'm hoping for a boost of energy, I know that on a full moon, I'm going to get that boost of energy. Whereas some people are the opposite. They get really, really tired and lethargic on a full moon. Some people get grumpy. Some people can be happy people all month long until it's a full moon. And then they could rip your head off and just by somebody looking at them the wrong way. Right? Some people say, oh, she must have PMT. No. No, she's just been affected by the moon. Right? A bit like the werewolf, right? The werewolf's fine until it's a full moon. Then... You know, um, turns into a werewolf. It's a human being until it's a full moon. And then, yeah, it turns into a werewolf and wants to eat everybody that it passes. Okay, so your two, two soul questions today, Loretta. Your first one is, what do I resist feeling right now? What do you resist feeling right now what is your body resisting to feel right now we have to feel it to heal it in order to let go of pain we first have to honor its existence emotions are like waves some are soft some are fierce and some are layered and some will sweep you off your feet. When we, are, when we allow ourselves to feel it all, we can then release what no longer serves us. Do you know that is so, so true, right? Um, our body tells us if we're sick, but half the time we ignore it. If we get headaches, our body is telling us it's stress. Right? So how do we have to feel that headache before we can heal it? Right? If we are tired, we have to feel that to know, okay, we're tired. How do I, how do I resolve that? I need to get some more rest. I've got a headache. Okay, I feel that. How do I resolve it? How do I heal it? Okay, I might need to um, cut out a lot of my stress I might need to do some meditation I might need to cut down my hours of work a little bit so that I'm not stressing myself out I might have to kick my husband out for a few hours because he's doing my napper in right whatever is causing you stress so if we don't feel it we can't heal it so listening to our body is vital so we need to know when it's ebbing when it's flowing when it's calm when it's a little bit choppy and when there's a storm brewing and we want to rip somebody's head off, right? We've got to embrace all of that and recognise it, right? It's, it's human emotions, right? Everybody gets stressed, everybody gets angry, everybody is calm, everybody goes through different emotions throughout their lives. And it's recognising Okay, I'm stressed. What do I do about it? Okay, I'm tired. How do I deal with it? How do I heal that? Okay, I need more sleep. All right, this person is pressing all my buttons and I'm now ready to explode. How do I stop myself from taking the head off their shoulders? 
Maybe I need to just walk away from them and lock myself into the bathroom and scream for an hour or two till I feel better. Right? So recognising the, uh, the signs in our body is so, so vital. If our body is screaming for rest, give it rest. If our body is screaming for food, give it food. If it constantly dry and we're constantly seeking for water, give it, you know, drink water. If we get a headache, maybe we're stressed, let's find a way of releasing that stress. If we're tired, give your body the rest, even if it's a nap here, there and everywhere. It doesn't matter, give it the rest it needs. So what is the action for your soul for this particular question? Allow yourself to feel this wave. Let it move through you, no matter how long it lasts. Then release it back into the ocean. Feel it, heal it, and enjoy the sweet freedom within your soul. So when you're stressed and you can feel it, and you just let that stress come and let it go, right? It's almost like you see the wave building and building and building until it comes up and crashes along the shore, right? As it's building, it's you, you feel the stress, you feel the energy building, building and building and building till it reaches its peak. And then as the wave crashes down on the shore, you just feel all of that build up, all of that stress just wash away from us. Right, so if our body's stressed, a little bit of meditation might take it to its peak and then crash it down. And a lot of times when I do guided meditation, which I'm doing tomorrow night, the, a lot of the times people will feed back and say, do you know what, I was actually stressed out today. I was actually having a really, really bad day today. And I came on and did your meditation with you. And that's all gone. I just feel like whew, a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I didn't realise how powerful meditation can be. I didn't realise how cutting off from that stress, just letting it go, letting it reach its peak and then just letting it wash away. I didn't realise how powerful that was until I started doing meditation. And a lot of people that then continued to go on to my YouTube channel and delve into my many med guided meditations that I've got on there would then meditate every day because they felt the benefits within their own body. They were listening, they were tuning into what their body needs. So if their body needed rest, they gave it rest. If it needed meditation, they gave it meditation. If it needed um, healing, you know, maybe we had bruised ourselves. maybe we need to put herbs or something, a herbal compress on it, right, to take away that pain, right? If we are sick, what is causing our body to be sick? Have we fed it the wrong thing and it's reacting? If we're chemical sensitive, have we had something with chemicals in it without even realising it and that's why our body is reacting? Listening to our body is so important especially when we're stressed. Oh, good question. Charging moon water even on a freezing night. Moon water is moon water whether it's frozen or not. What you can do, what I tend to do, especially on a really, really... Um, cold cold night one way you can do it is you can find a window within your home where the moon light comes through that window and you can put your jar or your jug or your bottle of moon water on the windowsill within the home and allow the moon light to hit that water bottle the other way is you can put um, moon water in a, a jar or a jug, right? And 
you might want to put it in a thermos flask, for example, right? So you might put it in like a, a glass thermos flask where the sunlight can get, the moonlight can get through to it. I live in Scotland and it doesn't get much colder in Scotland than it, you know, Scotland. It's, it's, it's a pretty cold country. So sometimes I put my moon water out and it freezes, but do you know what? It doesn't matter whether it freezes or whether it doesn't, the moon is still going to, you know, ice is just frozen water. It's still moon water. And the moon can still charge that ice. So leaving your bottle or your jug covered, obviously if it's a jug, cover it with um, cling film or something like that, or a, a bottle with a lid on it to stop all the night um, insects getting in there. But as long as your bottle or jug is covered, even if it turns to ice, it's absolutely okay. Let it do its thing. The moon will still charge that water. And then bring it in and just allow the water to defrost. The water is still charged, whether it's frozen or whether it's not, it will still be charged. There's many times I've put moon water out on a, on a full moon and it's been frozen. And I've just brought it in and let it defrost in its own accord you know um, it's the same thing but yes you you can um, you can put it on a windowsill if you don't want it to freeze put it on a windowsill where the, the moonlight can come in alrighty um so, Loretta's second soul question. When was the last time I danced freely? I love this because this is the inner child coming out. So, ask your soul today. When was the last time I let myself go and I just danced freely? When did I last just put some music on and just went with the rhythm? didn't matter who was there, I just put the music on and I went with the rhythm. When was the last time I did that? So dance. Because it will shift, dance, because it will shift into a beautiful state. Because it will get you out of your head and into your body and your heart. Dance because fear lives in the head along with the anxiety Control, guilt, frustration, and impatience. In just a few minutes of dancing, you will make the shift. You will feel a change of joy and confidence take over, and you will feel a soul reminder to live and to lead from your heart. Dancing is a tool to ground us in the now. It brings and triggers happiness and it is the gateway to freedom to become free to dance. I love this. Music, movement and dance is so important to me. If I was to go on a desert island and they said you could only bring one thing with you, what would it be? Music. Without a shadow of a doubt, it would have to be music because I couldn't live without music, right? And if I couldn't take music with me, you better believe I would sing at the top of my voice and I would dance. When I'm doing my housework, I sing. Sometimes when I'm doing the hoover in, I boogie with a hoover. If I'm mopping the floor, I boogie with a mop, right? Sometimes when we're feeling down or we're feeling stressed, we forget just to put a bit of music on. Just putting a happy tune on can change our mood in an instant from being grumpy, angry, to being, wow, upbeat, I've got this. Right? So sometimes when I'm stressed, I just put music on. I chill out, put meditation music on. But mostly... Um, you know, 
I, I'm, the, I'm the type of one, I, I'll put my headphones on and you'll sit me, see me sitting on the chair or the sofa and I'm kind of just giving it a boogie, right? I love TikTok for that, right? Somebody asked me on TikTok, do a duet. I'm up there, right? Okay, let's boogie. Let's get the body moving, right? But not only that, right? When you are moving your body, what else are you doing? You're exercising. You're moving every muscle in your body, right? And you're releasing all of that stress and you feel so much better. A lot of people that go to the gym, they might think, oh, I can't be bothered going to the gym the day. The thought of lifting all those weights and doing the treadmill, etc., etc. But when they come out of the gym, it's like, right, whoo, I'm ready to go. I'm fired up. I'm burned out, but I'm fired up. I'm ready to go, right? It just lifts their mood, right? Because when they're in the gym, what's playing in the background? Music. Why do gyms have music, right? To, up bit, up, to uplift your mood, right? You're more likely to go 100 miles an hour on a treadmill, you know, if, you're, if it's got a upbeat um, music along the side of that, right? You know, it's like having the Rocky theme while you're doing the treadmill, I can do this, I'm still doing this, right? So it lifts our mood. Music can lift our mood when we both need it. It can relieve stress. It can bring us freedom from the head because when we move, music is, is um, music soothes, soothes the soul. It can tame the savage beast. Right, because when we move to music, when we listen to music, when we listen to that rhythm of life, we're not listening to the head. Right, we're forgetting about the stress, we're forgetting about strain, we're forgetting about everything, and we're just going with the flow, we're just moving with the flow. So, uh, yes, when you're stressed, just dance. Right, when is the last time? that you dance freely. You know, they say in dance as if nobody's watching. That's exactly what we should be doing. And I love flicking through TikTok and you see everybody dancing. And the ones that are doing these dances, are they doing, oh, right? No, they are smiling. They are absolutely having a time of their lives when they're doing these dances, right? Because they, um, release these happy endorphins, right? It just make, it lifts our mood. It makes us feel better. And if you don't believe me, try it. You know, grab your hoover and start doing, you know. Uh, there was a, a, an, an old advert that I used to watch when I was kids and it, 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 it was great, right? It was one of those, do the shake him back and put the freshness back, right? And she was shaking this... Um, powder onto the carpets and then she would hoover it. So as she was um, hoovering it, she was going, shoot the shake him back and put the freshness back. Before she knew it, the hoovering was done. And it's like, oh, is that it? All right, well, maybe next time I can, well, maybe now I can mop the floor, right? And, and bring a, a, a song to mop the floor. Yep, yeah, moving energy. It moves energy from one source to another. Hello, hello, Erica. No problem, Erica. I will put you on the list. I'm going to put Erica on the list anyway. And even if Erica doesn't come back, I will do one of each for Erica, unless Erica has a choice and I'll just do whatever choice. So finishing off Loretta's, what is um, today's soul action for dance then? What is your soul asking you to do? Dance for, <laughs> sing like Rio, dance for three minutes to your favourite song. Notice the inward fire grow within and the feeling you feel being you. 
You are a wild, loving force. Express it with dance today. So your soul's action, your soul's action point just for today or every day if you want it to be, put your favourite song on and just dance for three minutes. That's it, just three minutes. And recognise how your body is feeling during that dance, right? And notice the inward fire grow within and that feeling that you feel, that is you being you. That is you just allowing your soul to be, freeing your soul through the movement of dance because you are a wild, loving force. Express it with dance today. I absolutely love music and dance and I can recommend it to anyone. If you're feeling low, pop on your favourite upbeat tune and move to it. doesn't matter how you move, just move. Yay, Loretta says hello, Rio. <laughs> Rio, Rio, Loretta is saying hello to you. Loretta is saying hello. You can say hello to Loretta. So I hope that has meaning for you. So pop on some of your favourite music and dance for three minutes to release all of that stress that you've put yourself through today, right? And just let it go. So I hope that that helps. Okay, Dr. Sunshine Fire. And then we've got Leah and then we've got Erica. I don't know if Susan's still with us or whether she fell asleep. Let me see if we've still got Susan. Have we still got Susan or did she fall asleep? She may have well fallen asleep. Okay, looks like she's maybe fell asleep. But from what I can see, my list is up to date with our subscribers. If you are a non-subscriber and you would like two cards today, um, gift a swan, a swan and you can uh, receive a two card reading. If you're a subscriber, you get two cards free um, every time I go live. Okay. Um, so who have we got next? So we've done, um, yeah, Dr. Sunshine Fire is next. Dr. Sunshine Fire would like soul cards. I think everybody's loving these soul cards. I'm loving these soul cards. I just think, wow, powerful, powerful messages. If anyone is interested in knowing where to get, um, this deck of cards, which is Soul Truth, they are on my um, oh, hippie website. I'm so excited. I'm hyped up today, so my, my spiritual brain is on fire right now. Um, but these are on my um, hippie life website, um, which is on, on my hippie shop, should I say. Where will you find my hippie shop? On my website. Where will you find my website? In my bio here on TikTok. I have a clickable website. If you click on that website, the first page is actually my hippie page. And at the bottom of that, you'll see the shop link. And on that shop link, um, you will find um, these cards, which is Soul Truth. They are absolutely, um, I would recommend them to everyone. Um, if you're looking to do more soul work, these are ideal. I think everybody is benefiting from these soul cards today. So let's shuffle the soul cards for Dr. Sunshine Fire. Oops, and ask Spirit to, all right, one's popped out of the card. So we're just going to check that one out. And what is the second card for Dr. Sunshine Fire that she needs to know or what her soul needs to know. These cards are lovely. They speak right to your soul. So if you're ever wondering how to help your soul on every level, emotional, spiritual, energy wise, 
abundance wise then these cards are absolutely amazing all right i absolutely love them i just think they're a powerful deck will i be using them more on my readings yes definitely okay let's pick a second card for dr sunshine fire Okay, that one's come out of the deck as well so we're going to go for these two all right so the first question for your soul today that you need to ask your soul what can i do to make a difference what can i do to make a difference what keeps you or what keeps you up at night what keeps you awake what makes you cringe when you think about it? Such that every search that every ounce of you screams no more. Where can I create purpose out of your pain? So what keeps you up at night? What makes you cringe when yet you think when every time you think about it? Such that, that every ounce of your body screams, no more, I don't want any more of this. Where can you create purpose out of your pain? Right, so whatever stress, and sometimes when we stress about something, it keeps us awake at night. Like if we're worried about something, it keeps us awake at night. Right, if somebody hurts us, it's painful, so it's going to keep us awake at night. Our mind's going to play, um, you know, make kind of do overtime right so what can you do to make a difference your soul's action make a difference in someone's life today big or small because of it it all makes a difference so sometimes people bring stress into our life sometimes other people's problems can keep us awake at night, right? How many people come to us on a day-to-day -day basis and say, can you help me with this problem? And they load, offload all of their stress, all of their um, problems onto you. And what do you do? You lie awake and you think about that person and you think, oh gosh, how can I help them, right? It might be that it's your own self causing your own pain because of what you are stressing about how can you make a difference to yourself then right so if you're worried about maybe okay the bills are piling up but i haven't got enough money well how can i deal with that how can i solve that how can i find a way of bringing um, more income in maybe i need to do a few extra hours at work maybe um, i can take out a loan and repay it back Maybe I can do this, that, or the next thing. And if it's somebody that's um, bringing problems to you, how can you, without losing any sleep, say, okay, tell me your problems, right? These are your problems. This is my recommendations. This is my advice. You can take it or leave it. Um, but I advise you to do this. I think you should maybe do this or try this. Or better still, um, you know, ask your you know, get your soul cards, ask your soul cards to, to help you out with this or ask your guides. You can guide them. You can't, you know, it's like leading a horse to water. You can lead a horse to water, but can you make it drink the water? No. If the horse refuses to drink it, it doesn't matter how many times you take that horse to water, you will never make it drink. But how can you make a difference to that horse? Right? If that horse is absolutely stubbornly not wanting to drink that water, how can you make a difference in that horse's life? Well, one way, you could lead the horse to the water and it's just going to sit there and look at the, the water and say, I'm not drinking that. And you might take a cup of water yourself from, you know, take a, a swig of the water and say, oh, this water's delicious, right? How do we get kids to to drink or eat food, right? 
we eat it ourselves and guaranteed if we're eating something ourselves your, your child's going to want to eat it it's the same we look outside the the box we can't make them or force them to eat the food but we can turn it into a game or you know make it seem tempting for them when i when my son was younger he's he has autism he did not eat soup of any kind especially if it had vegetables in it mm -mm. he would not eat my homemade soup no love no money right if it wasn't finger food that he could eat with his fingers he wasn't interested but one day he was actually sitting watching Toy Story and his favourite character in Toy Story was Buzz Lightyear. So the next time I made a bowl of soup and my son said, what are you making? I'm making Buzz Lightyear soup. I got the recipes direct from Buzz Lightyear and I'm making Buzz Lightyear soup. <gasps> Buzz Lightyear soup? I'll have some of that. And before I knew it, he was gulping down a bowl of vegetable soup, which he believed was um, Buzz Lightyear soup. Right? I turned a boring plate of soup into superhero um, soup. And now he absolutely loves his mum's um, vegetable soup. In fact, even today he says, remember how you used to fool me in thinking this was superhero Buzz Lightyear's um, soup. It was when he was older, his sister said, that's not Buzz Lightyear soup, that's vegetable soup. By that time, it was too late. He loved vegetable soup. So how do we relieve stress? How do we stop ourselves from overthinking at night? We deal with other people's stress or we deal with our own stress, right? It's true what they say, right? Never go to bed on an argument. Never go to bed feeling stressed. Work it out before you go to bed. That way, you are not... Um, depriving your body of sleep you're not stressing your body out isn't it amazing good morning everyone yep i have a son with the yeah oh wow yeah you know well you'll know how stubborn autistic people can be right if they don't want to eat something, they don't want to drink it, or if they've got a thing with texture, they just will not have it. And I thought, how can I get him to eat vegetables? He won't eat vegetables from a plate because if it's green, it's just not, he's just not having it. And it was just Buzz Lightyear. And I think it was a cartoon where Buzz Lightyear was having something to eat, and I thought, bingo! So, of course, when my son came in, what are you making? Buzz Lightyear soup. Oh, I'll have some of that. You know, if it's good enough for Buzz Lightyear, I'll, I'll eat it. You know, I just gave him a different name. It was the same vegetable soup as I'd always made, but to him it was Buzz Lightyear soup. And it worked a treat. Sometimes you have to think out of the box, right? I know not so long ago, um, the food industry decided to come up with this brilliant idea that children loved chocolate, they loved sweets, but they, they hated vegetables. And there was some companies that would actually made, made chocolate-covered vegetables. And apparently children were going crazy for it. Personally, I wouldn't thank you for a chocolate pea or a chocolate carrot. I like chocolate, but chocolate and veg, no. Um, but, you know... It was a way of getting children to eat more veg. Unfortunately, the phase soon died out, but um, there was a, a time when there was a certain company that was making um, chocolate-covered vegetables. Um, and it was liked by um, families because families that wanted to give their children vegetables that spat the vegetables out covered them in chocolate, right? Chocolate peanuts, there you go. Chocolate raisins, right? Fruit and chocolate. Now, fruit and chocolate, I don't mind. You know, toffee apples, etc., covered with chocolate and um, sprinkles. Yeah, I can do that. Um, but carrots covered in chocolate, or peas, or broccoli with chocolate. Uh, no, I don't see it. But it was a trend at one time. So, 
um, reflecting on this, what keeps you up at night, what makes you cringe when you think about it, such that every ounce of you screams, I don't want any more of this stress. Where can you create purpose out of your pain? How can you get rid of that pain by dealing with it, by doing something about it? So maybe even with illness, sometimes illness can cause us stress as well. And we might go to the GP and we might be prescribed pharmaceutical medicines which probably solve one issue but causes another, which is why I don't touch pharmaceutical medicines. Um, so how do I deal with that? I go herbal, right? I go natural. If it's grown, if it's leafy, if it's fresh, I will um, use herbs. Because there's nothing that a pharmacy can do that a herbal medicine can't do. In fact, herbal medicine can do a hell of a lot more good for our body than pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceutical companies won't tell you that because if they did tell you that, they would lose billions and billions of dollars every year. Scary, right? If you take a packet of painkillers that are pharmaceutical, you know, uh, paracetamol or um, codeine or something like that, right? It's got chemicals in it. For every pill, for every tablet, the pharmaceutical companies get $3 or £3 per tablet, not per bottle, per tablet. Multiply that by the population of the earth. £3 or $3 per tablet, per bottle. This is what the pharmaceutical companies are raking in, year in, year out, poisoning our bodies. Right? If we grow our own herbs in the garden, what's it costing us? A lot less than £3 per pill. There's no chemicals, it's fresh, it's natural, and it heals. We don't have any side effects to it. So that's one way that we can help cure illness or stress that, that causes stress in our body. If our body gets ill, how can we sort it? Natural. If our body gets stressed, how can we deal with it? We can maybe find the root cause of that stress, deal with it, work with it. So what is the soul's purpose for this action? What is the action for this? Make a difference in someone's life today, be it big or small, because all of it will make a difference. So helping someone with stress, helping yourself with stress, even if it's just a little bit of advice, even if it's just making a bowl of um, Buzz Lightyear soup, just to get your child to eat a bit of vegetables, etc. Whatever it takes to solve a certain, certain problem, be the action big or small, it all makes a huge difference. Your second soul question, what is my body telling me right now? What is my body telling me right now, right in this moment? Our body speaks to us through physical pain or discomfort. Our body sends messages for us to look more deeply. See the trapped emotions, the barking fears, the beliefs that limit you. Listen to your physical body and you will be led to the source of your pain. It's time to get your healing on. It's true what they say, right? If you want to know where the pain's coming from and how to clear it, we need to listen to our bodies. Our body tells us and gives us signals every day. If we get headaches, we're stressed. Right? If we get hunger pangs, the body's hungry. And if we eat food and we still get hunger, hunger pangs, the body's telling you, I'm not hungry, it's not, it's not food I need, it's water. There's a fine line between the body needing food and the body needing water. If you're never quite sure whether your body is hungry or thirsty, 
drink a glass of water first. If you drink that glass of water and you no longer feel hungry, chances are you weren't hungry, you were dehydrated and your body was saying, I need water. Right? Sometimes if we drink, if we eat food because we think we're hungry and we just can't, we get that bloated feeling but we still kind of feel hungry, our body again is telling us, it wasn't food I was after, it was actually water. So eating the food is going to dry us out, we're going to maybe feel drier, we're going to get a dry mouth or we're going to feel more thirsty. Your body is basically, if we listen to our body right at the beginning, our body was saying it's actually not food I was looking for, it was water. All right? Um, some people struggle on a full moon like tonight. And chances are an extra couple of glasses of water is going to help that situation because what does the moon affect? It moons affects the tides, it affects water. Our bodies are made of 80% water. So if we are dehydrated on a full moon, we may get headaches, we may feel stressed, we may get brain fog, we may not be able to think right, we may get moody. Yet having an extra couple of um, glasses of water on a full moon can make a huge difference because it can balance that water level within our body, it can hydrate our body and we're more able to cope with the effects of a full moon. So what is the soul's action for what is your body telling you right now? Get the book Heal Your Body by Louise L. Hay and find the answers to what toward which your body is guiding you. So apparently there is a book out there called Heal Your Body. I love learning things from um, books. I might even look that book up myself, actually, because I love foods that heal your body. Um, so get the book Heal Your Body by Louise L. Hay and find the answers to which your body is guiding you. I'm always listening to my body. I might actually source that book myself um, because that that sounds like a really good book. I love books that are um, healing books or um, working with your soul and working with your body, etc. So I might source that one out myself um, and give you feedback on it as well. But yeah, a lot of us don't listen to our body. And if we do, it's like, oh, I've got a headache. I'll go to the chemist and get a packet of painkillers. We don't, for one minute, think, okay, I'm going to go to the chemist and get a packet of painkillers and poison myself with the chemicals in the painkillers, right? A lot of people are um, super sensitive to codeine, which is a drug that's in um, a lot of painkillers. So they might take a painkiller which will take away the headache, but they might start feeling sick, nauseous, etc. So it will take away the headache, but it will make them feel sick. So it cures one thing, but it gives you something else in its place. Thank you for the follows, everyone. So I hope that has meaning for you and you found it enlightenment. I've actually found these cards really enlightening as I've been using them tonight. Um, so I will be using them more and more throughout our reading sessions. But I hope you found it just as inspiring as I uh, found reading these um, cards. I just think they are absolutely beautiful cards. Okay. Um, we have got Leah next, and I don't know if Susan's back. She may be back or she may have disappeared. Let me just check my list, just in case she's not back and I've missed anybody. Okay. Okay, I don't think we've missed anybody. Do we still have Leah? Thank you for the likes and the gifts, everyone. For those that have just joined, welcome in. Come on in and take a seat. Um, if you would like a two-card reading tonight, a swan gift will get you a two-card reading. 
if you are a subscriber you will automatically get two cards free every time I go live okay Leah is next do we still have Leah we are looking for Leah yep I see her on my list as well Thank you for the heart, Sandra. I wonder if she's fell asleep. Some some people watch my live and they say they fall asleep. I had one lady says, I love coming in your lives. And there's just something soothing about your lives that I end up falling asleep. Yes, I've got Leah and then Erica. Um, I think Erica disappeared. So I think after we've done Leah, we'll do a couple of yes, no questions before we do Erica. Or we might do Leah and Erica and then do some yes, no questions if there's no more readings. But yes, we will be doing some yes, no questions. We'll do yes, no questions to finish off the readings. How does that sound? Okay, Leah, Leah, Leah. Is Leah here? I know she's on my list, or she was on my list. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do some yes, no questions to finish the readings off. Okay. Leah Money, we are looking for two cards for Leah. We'll give Leah a couple of minutes and she's maybe fell asleep. And if she has fallen asleep, oh, she's here. What two cards would you like, Leah? We thought you'd fell asleep. So we've got the soul cards or the unicorn cards or one of each. I know sometimes TikTok um block some of the questions I don't know why they do that last night we were having quite a, a few problems um, with the comments because if it was just general comments TikTok allowed them and if it was um, picking a card for some reason it didn't let it didn't pick the cards so Leah, if you have chosen a card and for some reason the comments aren't showing up, we can do it another way. If it's the um, unicorn cards, throw up an, a unicorn emoji. Or if it's soul cards, um, throw up a red heart for soul cards. Maybe that will work if TikTok is not bringing your cards through. So unicorn for the unicorn ones or a red heart for the soul cards. Or a unicorn and a red heart if you want one of each. Let's see if that works. Thank you for the likes, everyone. You are all amazing. Thank you for the likes, for the gifts, for the shares. All righty. OK, 
Okay, two moons. Right, we don't have the moon cards. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, right. Unicorns for the moon. I know you can put a moon. So if you want the unicorn ones, give me a moon. If you want the soul cards, give me a red heart. So for these ones, give me a moon for these ones or a red heart for these ones. Or a moon and a red heart if you want one of each. Okay, moon for the unicorns. Right, okay, let's do two unicorns. We got there in the end. There we go. I don't know why TikTok do not show, like, unicorns, one of each, etc. I have no idea how they do that. It doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes they just stop questions from coming through. Okay, let's do two unicorns. Alrighty. That's the one way of getting the right cards. Okay. Let's do the unicorn. The unicorns are really pretty cards. I do like the unicorn ones. Alrighty. Let's pick the pretty unicorns. Rio likes the unicorns, don't you, Rio? Yeah. Do you like the unicorns? Let's bring you over here a wee bit. Let's bring you over a little bit. You're a bit too far out. There we go. There we are. There we go. Pretty Rio. <coughs> Oh my goodness me. Excuse my witch. It's a full moon. I have a witch that only supposed to go off when you make really, really loud noises. And she has been going off, on and off, all day today. It must be the full moon energy. She did that last night. I think she only cackled once last night throughout the whole um, readings. So I don't know why. There's a lot of spiritual energy. Did you set that witch off? Did you? Our little Rio in the corner here. He's like, what was that? Did you hear that witch? Did you? Did you hear it? Yeah. Every time I stroke Rio, right, I'm not going to stroke you. <laughs> oh my goodness me. The witch is attached to Rio, clearly. Because every time I stroke Rio, is she going to do it now? No, she's not connected to Rio because I'm stroking Rio and she's not doing it. How bizarre is that, that the witch is cackling? That is absolutely crazy. The witch is actually behind me, um, but yeah, she 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 does cackle for no reason today whatsoever. And I thought it was maybe me just stroking Leo, but obviously it's not. So she's just randomly going off. Okay. Yeah, Leah, I can I can read the bit where you're saying I'm here or can anyone else see my messages, but we can't see anything else. I don't know why. We can't see, like, if you're asking questions, we can't see the questions. I don't know why TikTok does that. Because it doesn't do it with everybody. It's just certain people. It just, I don't know why it doesn't bring the comments through. 
but I can see, is anyone else seeing my messages? The messages that I can see so far from yourself, Leah, is I am here, and then the next one was obviously the moons, and then the other one was, can anyone see my messages? That's the ones that I can see. All right. TikTok is strange. So, the first unicorn, Norse gold, co uh, rose gold cosmic pool. This one came out before. Um, breathe in cosmic love and soak up wisdom. So again, what is cosmic love? Cosmic love is the white light that is all around us, universal white light. When we meditate, we connect to this white light, this universal white light. We leave our subconscious um, mind or our subconscious, I'm just going to change this camera around a little bit. We leave our subconscious mind, um, we leave our human mind behind, sorry, and we enter our subconscious, our spiritual mind. When we enter that spiritual mind, we are connecting to source, we are connecting to that white light. White light is universal source. When people do my earth and sky grounding, the light that they are bringing in from the universe is that white gold, rose gold white light. And then when they're bringing the healing energy up from the earth, it's that violet healing energy. White light coming down, healing energy coming up from the earth, sky and earth, as above, so below. So... When we want to connect to spirit, we want to draw down that white light. And the only way we can do that is through meditation. So we slow down our breath, we count our breathing, which takes us into our subconscious um, mind. And then we draw in that golden white light. And we spread that light as far as we can spread it in all directions so we spread it to the roof and beyond to the ground and underneath to the left front right and behind us cocooning ourselves in a massive 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 ball of this golden light within that golden light are all the answers that your body needs because within that golden light are your universal guides angels, gods, goddesses, all your deities, all our loved ones in spirit reside within that universal golden light and we can access those universal realms at any given time, day or night, just by bringing ourselves into that sacred space, into that meditative state. We will never, ever be able to connect to source in the hustle bustle of life. We have to leave that hustle and bustle of life behind us and emerge ourselves in meditation. It's one of the reasons that you will hear me teach in my Facebook teaching groups. The first port of call to any communication with spirit, to your angels, to your guides is meditation. It's leaving the human brain behind and entering the source, entering that rose gold um, cosmic pool of light. And that light is everywhere. It is all around us and we can access that light at any given time, night or day. And within that light, we can find all the answers that our soul needs. We can communicate with past loved ones, with angels, with our guides. We can communicate with gods, goddesses, or whoever deities that we want. We can even enter the magical realms, the unicorn realms, the fairy realms, etc. It's all accessible. But if we're not communicating by meditating every day, we will never ever see or experience these beautiful, peaceful realms. Oh. 
All right, okay. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why. All right, okay. Well, I think the two unicorn cards are perfect for you anyway. That was the choice I was going to choose for you, was the two unicorn cards, because that's why I saw two unicorns. So we'll go with the unicorns. Um, Leah, are you in my Facebook um, subscribers group and chat? Because another way of doing it is if you're in my subscribers group on Facebook and you're also in my subscribers chat room on Facebook, a lot of the people that can't get their answers showing up will message me via the um, Facebook Messenger on the um, VIP subscribers chat room. And it comes up at the top of my screen and I can just flick over to Messenger, read the comment and then come back. So that's another way of being able to do it. I know um, Susan at one time had problems with that. So what Susan did was she messaged the VIP um, subscribers messenger chat and I was able to see it or Susan was able to see, see it and etc or one of the, the moderators were able to see it and then pass on the, the questions and answers. That's another option if TikTok are being funny. Hopefully it's a glitch that TikTok will sort out at some point. Okay, so let's carry on with this. So meditation every day is going to help you to access this rose gold uh, cocoon of white healing light. And this is why you'll always hear me say meditation is the only way to connect to source. Your second unicorn card, access your gifts. So the universe wants you to access the gifts that you already have, even though you might not know that you've got them. Explore your treasure chest. Accept who you truly are. So sometimes we don't look within ourselves to find out what gifts we have. We're too busy helping everybody else. We're too busy working we're too busy looking after the husband home kids going to work doing all the things that we need to do and we very rarely look at ourselves or look within we very rarely ask ourselves what gifts do i have how can i use those gifts to better my life and other people I've always known since I was a child that I could heal just by touching somebody with my hands. I had natural spiritual healing. I wanted to develop that later on by becoming a Reiki master. So I did my Reiki 1 and 2 and later on I did my Reiki master teacher. So that not only could I do spiritual healing... But I can now combine both spiritual healing and Reiki healing, which gives an, an even power, more powerful experience to my clients who are receiving Reiki. Because the clients who receive my distant Reiki are also receiving spiritual healing at the same time. So I took the gifts that Spirit had already gave me, i.e. the healing energy, the spiritual healing energy, and I improved it so that I could um, deepen my healing connection with my clients. I was given, I was born with a very strong sense of second sight because I was born blind, I didn't have um, physical sight, but I had very clear spiritual sight. I didn't need the spirit, I didn't need the physical sight, I had the spiritual sight. 
So I always knew my spiritual sight was stronger than my um, physical sight, especially now when um, my sight got really, really worse at the age of 50. So for eight and a half years, I've been um, working with very little vision. But has it stopped me doing the cards? No, because of the fact that one of the gifts that I do have is very clear spiritual vision. So even if I lost all of my sight tomorrow, which I hope doesn't happen, I could still read cards. Right, I could still read, even if I don't see the cards, I could maybe get cards that were made with Braille, etc. Right, where there's a will, there's always a way. We all have individual gifts, but we might not know what those gifts are until we really, really tap into ourselves and say, right, okay, what am I good at? Right, what, what do people tell me that I'm good at because sometimes we don't see it for ourselves but other people will tell us my grandchildren would say to their mom if they were sick I don't want you you can't make me better but if you take me to my gran my gran has a magic cuddle and every time I get a hug from my gran when I'm sick she makes me better I don't know how she does it but she's magic she makes me better so I already knew that my faith in my healing ability was helping my grandchildren and I trusted that gift. So sometimes other people can actually let you know what those gifts are. You might have a, a need or a longing to heal people. So you might go into nursing. You might have a longing to teach. Right? You might have a vast amount of knowledge and that knowledge could be past life knowledge, not just this life knowledge. So you might want to say, well, I'm going to become a teacher. You might love doing makeup. So you might become a beautician. You might love doing nails. So you might be a nail technician. Either way, you are bringing service to other people through your own gifts. But to do that, you need to find out what your own gifts are. Not what other people's gifts are, because other people's gifts are for them to use. But what is Leah's gift? What is Leah good at? Right? What is Leah passionate about? Well, turn that passion into something that you can use to help other people for a higher good. That's the message of your cards today and I hope that message, re message resonates with you. Oh, I'm so glad. Yet yeah, cancers can be very emotional people and I'm so glad it resonates with you. Oh, bless. This is why I love my cards and I trust my guides because I never know whether my cards are going to resonate but I do trust my guides with their messages and that's the key. If I didn't trust my um, guides with their messages I wouldn't be good at doing what I do. Okay let me just check my um, list of viewers to make sure because Susan isn't with us tonight. I just want to make sure that I'm not missing out on any of my subscribers that may have sneaked in let me just have a look because I know most of them alrighty thank you for the confetti thank you so much love that alright um, we don't have Erica I think Erica went off so I'm gonna choose one um I'm gonna choose one of each for Erica because I know that she will catch up on my YouTube channel and then we'll do a couple of yes no questions to end um tonight's readings. So tomorrow night it is spiritual chat night. 
so there is no card readings tomorrow night but I will be here doing a meditation the meditation the guided meditation that I'm going to be doing tomorrow um, through popular request I am going to be doing a past life regression so if you've ever wondered did I have a past life and if I did have a past life who and what was I in a past life was I male was I female? What type of work did I do? What type of person was I? What other people were in that life? Did I live in a town? Did I live in a city? Did I live in a country? Etc, etc. So if you have ever been curious about that, please join me tomorrow night here. Um, round about, I'm going to say 9.30, which is 3.30 p.m., CST time or 2.30 p.m. Um, other USA times. Um, and if you're in the UK, it will be 9.30 p.m. I will be doing uh, that guided meditation for everyone. If you do miss it and you want to take part in that meditation at any time, you will find my meditations... Uh, will be saved to my meditation playlist on the Lady Moonlight YouTube channel. The link to that YouTube channel is on my website here on my TikTok bio. If you go to my TikTok bio and there isn't a website, be careful because you may be following a fake account. All right, because there's a lot of people that try and uh, impersonate my account. So there are a, a few Lady Moonlights or Mystic Witches out there that maybe have my photo or etc but they don't have a website they are fake accounts so make sure that the account that you are following has lady moonlight at the top and the hippie gypsy witch below that and a website link all right so it'll have the hippie uh, gypsy witch website link on there as well also my account has over 9,100 followers. A fake account will have a hell of a lot less than that. All right. So if it's not got 9,000 followers and it hasn't got a website um, link attached to the bio, it ain't me. Don't follow it. Um, I will always say that in my lives to stop my followers being caught up in scams. A few of my followers in the past have got caught up in these scams and scammers have jumped into their DM box, which again is something I never do. I will never jump into your DM box and ask you for a reading. I never ask for money. Ever. I don't have to. I come on live uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday and Saturday doing readings. I don't have to jump into your DM box and ask for readings or money. I don't need to. Um, so I will never DM you with anything. Um, people usually DM me, but not the other way around. Uh, so don't be caught up with that. If you get a DM from a Lady Moonlight or a Hippie Gypsy Witch, etc., it ain't me. All right, so uh, block it and report it. But don't follow it. All right. Just keeping everyone safe because nobody likes to get caught up with a scammer. And there are plenty around on TikTok. So be careful out there, folks. Okay. I see that we're getting a lot of... Um, yeah, there is a lot of scammers out there, crazy, but, uh, seemingly the more popular you are with your readings, etc. on TikTok, the more scammers want to use your account to get more money for themselves. It's sad really, because if they learn to do readings themselves, they could actually work themselves and get the money or the gifts for themselves but they use good hard-working people like myself uh, they steal their photos they steal their names and make up a fake account and then they jump in they, they look at look through my followers 
and then they follow back all my all of my followers um and then they will um of course my followers then think it's me with a new account and they follow back and then they get all these scammy horrible horrible messages so be careful folks Make sure the account that you are following has over 9,100 followers and it has a website link. One thing spammed accounts cannot do is copy my website. They can't put a website link. You need over a thousand followers to get a website link on uh, TikTok. And even if they got a thousand followers and got a website, it wouldn't be my website, right? Because... My website is totally separate from TikTok. It's my personal website. It's my business website. It's something that they can't copy. So if there's anything that you need to look for to make sure it's my account, it's a website link on my bio. If it doesn't have a website, if it is, I, it's usually an MKE, which is a milkshake website, and it's got the gyp hippie gypsy witch attached to it. And if you click it, it opens up my website. So if there isn't one of them, scammers will go to any length. I actually um, caught one of the um, scammed accounts. And um, what I did with my old account uh, bio, what I did with my bio one time was, when it was the Mystic Witch before I changed it to the Hippie Gypsy Witch, was at the top of my bio, I actually wrote... I will not PM you for readings or money. So what the scammers did, they made up a fake account using my photo and under the bio they put, I will DM you for readings and money. Wow. Right? That is crazy, right? Um... And just by doing that, I think they managed to tote up, before I caught hold of their account, they managed to tote up a thousand followers, right? So now I exposed them. Um, all the fake accounts are now exposed on my profile. Um, and I block every fake account that I find. And a lot of my followers will message me and say, I found another fake account. And they'll, they'll uh, message me with the fake account and I'll go and block them. So I try and keep all of you lovely people safe from these scammers. So do check that it's got a clickable website account. Scammers are getting really, really clever. Um, not clever enough because they can't copy a, a website. So will I ever remove my website link from my account? Never, right? Because it helps you guys and ladies to recognise my genuine account. But yeah, Loretta, they are, they are ruthless. Um, they will try any trick in the book. So they'll take your words that you've got on your profile and they will twist it, right? Even if you, uh, you know... I, I put the words on my profile picture. So they just stole the profile picture that already had the words on it. Right? And then they put, I will DM you or I will message you for money and readings instead of I won't or I will never. So now I changed it and said, if, you, if I don't have a clickable website link, try copying that one. They haven't, fake accounts haven't put that in their bio yet. They haven't actually put, look for my clickable website link, right? Because they're going to give themselves away. So um, just for anyone that's got a big account out there, right? Get yourself a free website and, and get yourself a thousand followers and put your website link on your bio. They can't copy that. And then tell your followers, I have a clickable website link. And if it's not there, it's a fake account. It's a sure way of stopping the scammers. It is twisted in itself, but yeah, this is this is a, the the length to what these scammers will do to get a fake. There is hundreds of fake accounts out there, and yet some of the genuine accounts don't even know that their accounts are being faked until one of their followers says, "You actually PM'd me." I actually had 
I'll tell you how I um, found out that my accounts were being um, scammed. I had a lovely gentleman. He followed me for from the time that I started TikTok till the present day. And I did a live one night and he was joined me in the live and he says, Lady Moonlight, why did you um, PM me and um, tell me that you needed to give me a reading and it would only cost £200, but that £200 would be well worth the reading. And yet when I sent you the £200, I got no reading. You can imagine the poor man's shock when I said it wasn't me that PM'd him. And he showed me the account and I said, that wasn't my account, that wasn't me. That's why you paid that money and they did a runner with your money. So be careful, folks. Check for that website link. Make sure you're not following a scammer. All right. And I will continue to shout that from the rooftops at every live that I do. Just so that my new followers know that if they're not sure whether it's me, they look for that website link. Because that's one thing that scammers cannot copy is my website link. But yeah, it is. It can be, scammers can be really, really horrible. But, you know, I'm determined, you know, um, if you're going to come on to my bio and steal my stuff and twist my words, I will call you out. And I will continue to shout from the rooftops, check my website or check my bio has got a website. Also check that I have over 9,000 followers. If I have anything less than 9,000 followers... It's a fake. If it doesn't have a website link in my bio, it's a fake. If it tells you that they will PM you for cards or money or readings or money, right, or cash app, it's not me. It's a fake. You will never find me messaging you. Quite the opposite. People message me and say, can I book a reading? I don't have to jump in anybody's DM box. That's the crazy thing about it. I never have, and I never would. That's not my style. I don't have to. Money is not my god. You know, um, if money is wasn't if money was my god, I would not be doing um, free readings every Thursday. Um, if money was my god, I wouldn't have subscriptions so that I could give my subscribers free readings every. Um, time I'm doing lives I just wouldn't do it okay so I'm going to do Erica's two cards and then we're going to do a couple of questions and answers to finish um, tonight off how does that sound am I being called out I don't know I don't think you're being called out Unless you're a scammer? No. <laughs> All right. If you're not a scammer, no. If you're a scammer, yes, I'll call you out. But if you're not a scammer, no, I won't call you out. All right. So this is Erica's cards. I know Erica had to go off, but I know she follows and I know she watches Lady Moonlight's YouTube channel to get her playback. What are we doing? We're doing Erica's card. Then we'll do a couple of yes, no questions to end the night. So just a, a few couple of um, quick yes, no questions, which are free. So Erica's unicorn card, creative solutions. Um, think about um, or think outside the box. View things from a higher perspective. A lot of us don't think outside the box. We try and do things and then it doesn't work out, so we give up. Instead of saying, okay, that didn't work, but I still need to do this. So how can I do it a different way? 
Again, it's thinking out the box. If it hasn't worked this way, how else can I do it? Right? Being registered blind, I have to think out the box every single day. There are challenges in my life that I have to think, right, how can I do this? Right? S simple things that everybody takes for granted, such as threading a needle. Well, how can I thread a needle if I can't see the minute little needle hole? Right? I have to use either a strong magnifying glass or one of these um, needle threaders that does the threading the needle for you. Again, thinking outside the box, all right? If I'm crossing the road and I can't judge how far the car is, how can I cross the road safely? Or if I can't see whether the silent lights are green, red or whatever. Well, underneath all of the pedestrian crossings there's a little cone that spins. And I can just simply put my hand underneath the level crossing and as soon as that cone starts to spin, the, the, the lights are in green and I can cross the road. I also have very acute hearing. So I can tell how far a car is away and how fast it's going. And I can judge whether I've got time to cross that road or not. So where you lose one sense, you gain another so it's doing the same thing as a visual impaired, a visually um, sighted person can do, but in a different way. Um, not so long ago, these two, uh, Rio was in the same cage as his uh, brother uh, Rocky until they started not getting on with each other. So we had to get two separate cages for them. So the first cage came and it was a buildy up. So using magnifier, I never give up on anything. So I built this cage from scratch. And then we bought another one for the other one because the other cage was kind of wet and thin as well. So we bought the same cage thinking, well, I know how to build that one. So we'll get them both the same cage. When the second cage came, it didn't have any instructions. And my fiancé says, well, that's great. We can't, we can't build that. It's no good. Send it back. And I said, no, we don't have to send it back. I built the first one. The first one, I know what the first one looks like. I know where the parts go. There is only eight screws holding that whole cage together. There is only four sides. It doesn't take a genius to work out how to build that cage without um, instructions. And I proved myself right to him by building Rio's cage from scratch with no instructions. Where there was no instructions, I thought, thought out of the box and did it a different way. And life can throw curveballs our way. Life can give us problems that we can normally work out but what if we can't work them out? Do we just give up on that? If we're working for our goals and our dreams, do we just give up on it if it doesn't work out the first time? No. We just think out with the box. Okay, if, it didn't, if, it, if I couldn't do it this way, how else can I do it? Maybe you want to go to college, but all the colleges are full up for the course that you want to do. Think outside the box. Okay. The physical colleges are all filled up. There is no spaces. Do I give up on my dreams of going to college? No. There are online colleges where you can enrol in the, col the same college course, but do the work at home. Same result. You get the same qualifications. You get the same certificate. You just have to think outside the box. A lot of us don't do that. So I hope this resonates with Erica when she gets to lead this back. But if there's something that you've been struggling with, Erica, and it's not worked out and you've thought about just giving up, don't give up. Ask yourself, how else can I do this? Is there another way I can do it? Is there a different way that I can do it to achieve the same results? 
And if you really, really do think about it and you um, think outside the normal box or the normal strategy, you will find a way. What is it they say where there is a will, there is a way? And there definitely is. Take the M out of impossible. Anything is possible. Take the disability out of, take the dis out of disability. You have ability. My son has autism and the world and his brother has taught my son that he's not capable of, or he doesn't deserve to do this. He doesn't deserve to do that. He doesn't deserve to do the next thing. And I'll give you a, a life um, example of that. My son, even though he has autism, he is an absolute fantastic singer. And I used to take him to um, a Saturday um, civil service club. And they did a karaoke night and my son got up and sang karaoke. And he blew everyone away with his singing. And not everybody knew he had autism because when he was on the stage, he loved singing and he just did his thing. And he was then asked, um, I was then asked, can we enter your son into our club, interclub music uh, song contest? Because he may bring the trophy home for us. So all the social clubs would do this um, round robin singing um, competition. So I went with my son and I also sing, so both my son, we, we, we did a mother and son du, uh, duo for our club at the time. And we did, uh, we got to the final. And one of the, I heard one of the ladies who got knocked out of the semi-final saying to one of the judge, that young lad does not deserve to be in the competition, he's not right in the heat. That son, that boy has a disability. He has a mental disability. He does not deserve to be on that stage and singing. And I could not believe my ears when I heard that. And I woke up, woke up, walked up to the lady and I tapped her on the shoulder and I said, that young lad is my son. And that young lad has autism, but he has the most beautiful voice. And he has the right, just like you have, to go up on that stage and to bellow his lungs out, if that's what he so chooses to do. Is he, you, you're saying he's not right in the head? Ask yourself, is it my son that's not right in the head? Or is it you that is prejudiced? Probably you that's prejudiced, which makes you not right in the head, right? And ultimately, from what I can see, it's sour grapes because my son knocked you out of the semi-finals. Is that my son's fault? No, maybe you weren't good enough to get to the finals. And the judges agreed and said, no, he has a right to continue. And my son got to the finals and brought the trophy home for the club, disability or not. So that's why I always say, even if you have a disability, take the dis out of disability and you're abled. Where there's a will, there's a way. If you think something is impossible, take the M out of it. Everything is possible. You just need to think out the box and find a way. Hello, Janae. Yay, Janae is here. Hello, hello. Janae, um, we are doing Erica's last card. Uh, Erica was the last card, but I can fit you in if you would like a card. Susan was here, but she had to leave, I think. But I've got new soul cards, so if you want two cards, let me know and I'll add you on the list before I finish. Hello, hello, hello. Yay, Janae's here. Janae is one of our mods. 
And she's awesome. We love Janie. So I'm just finishing Erica's second card. Right, let's put Janae on for two cards. So we'll do Janae and then we'll do a couple of yes, no questions. So Janae, we can fit in because she is a subscriber and she's also our mod. After Janae, the readings list is closed until Thursday. Um, but we will do a few yes, no questions at the end. So Erica's second card is our brand new Soul Truth cards. So Erica, when you get to see this back on um, Lady Moonlight um, YouTube channel or the VIP subscribers group, ask your soul or ask yourself, what do I resist feeling right now? What do I resist feeling right now what is my body resisting to feel what is it that i don't want to feel what is it that i'm ignoring right and the answer we have to feel it to heal it in order to let go of pain we first have to honor its existence you have to say well the pain is real it exists i feel it so it must be real and I must deal with it. Emotions are like waves. Some are soft, some are fierce, some are layered, and some will sweep you right off your feet. When we allow ourselves to feel it all, we then know what we can release and what no longer serves us. So a lot of us, if we get a headache, right? We don't look for the source of the headache. We just run to the pharmacy and get a set of painkillers, right? We don't look for the source, right? Sometimes people say, right, I've got a headache. I'm just going to ignore it and just going to carry on through it. Some people work through it. If you've got a cold, oh, I can't afford to take time off work. So I'm just going to work through the cold and I'm going to ignore the pain. I'm going to ignore the symptoms. We should never, ever ignore the symptoms. Same as if we're stressed. A lot of people are stressed, they don't recognise the stress and they get even more stressed. They don't stop to actually say, okay, this is what I'm feeling and this thing that I'm feeling is I am too stressed, what do I do with it? Right? What do I keep and what, what no longer serves me? So we then find out, okay, I've got a headache, I've got a migraine. What caused that migraine? Oh, right, I've just worked a 12-hour shift and it was the most stressful shift ever. Boom, there's the answer to my migraine. So maybe taking some rest instead of taking medication. Maybe doing some gua sha, to uh, facial massage to relieve that headache rather than run to a pharmacy and put more chemicals into my body, which probably would um, help the headache but solve another, uh, cause another issue. If we've got the cold, right, what can we give our bodies to help that cold? Well, you know, lemon, making some fresh lemon and with honey in it, right, again, making sure that we're getting rid of all the excess sinus fluid in our face by doing gua sha, right? Keeping ourselves warm, plenty hot drinks, all of this. Oops, I don't know what's happened here. Give me a second. I don't know what's happened. Just
All right. Okay, we are back. Spirit had unplugged the charger, would you believe? So hopefully we are back. All right. Scary moment there. So going back to this card, hopefully um, we don't get cut off. Um, so I'm just going to uh, carry on. What do I... Uh, what do what do I resist feeling right now? All right, so paying attention to our body rather than just finding a quick solution, right? Um, headaches. What's the probable cause? Stress, right? Always being tired, overworking, not giving ourselves, not giving our body enough rest, right? Listen, our body will tell us what's wrong. We just need to listen to the body, not think, okay, I've got a pain. I'll just go and put codeine into my body, put more chemicals in it. Yes, it might mask the pain, but will it cure it in the long run? Probably not. So maybe a simple way of dealing with it, a natural way, rather than pumping chemicals into my bloodstream. So I made, I'm going to stay away from pharmaceuticals and I'm going to go more health-wise, more herbal. And I'm going to get maybe a herbal book, uh, you know, learn um, herbalism, learn how to deal with um, making, you know, uh, we could do oils, essential oils, work with essential oils. Crystals are a great way of healing. Sometimes just using an amethyst crystal Taking a piece of amethyst and just placing the amethyst on your third eye, if you've or on your um, yeah, on your third eye or your temple, if you've got a headache, just sit there with the amethyst. It will take the headache away. No pills, no codeine, no paracetamol, no nasty chemicals. All natural. So always listen to your body. So. Uh, Erica, what is your soul's action? What is the action for your soul? So your soul action, allow yourself to feel this wave of pain or stress. Let it move through you, no matter how long it lasts. Then release it back into the ocean. So basically feel it. Then find a way to heal it and then enjoy the sweet freedom within your soul. All right. So if you're not feeling it, how can you heal it? Right. So your body will give you pain to say, hey, something's wrong. I need help. Right. No pain, no gain. Right. So if the body's not, if, the, if our body is not giving us pain signals, how can it tell us that there is something wrong? So where there is pain, there is something wrong. And you can choose either herbal or you can choose pharmaceuticals. Me, I choose herbal all the time. Why would I want to um, give my body nasty chemicals? Every, you know, anything with pharmaceutical has chemicals in it. So anything from a pharmacy, whether it's Boots, Lloyds, whatever, right? It has chemicals in it. Right, pharmacy products ha are all chemical based, right? And did you know that pharmacies will never um, suggest herbal medicines? Why? Of course they won't. You buy a bottle of vitamins from the pharmaceutical that has vitamins in it, but has more chemicals than vitamins. There are a hundred tablets in a, that bottle. The pharmaceutical companies get three pounds or three dollars per tablet. Times that by a hundred tablets. That's just for one bottle. Now multiply that by how many people are on this earth. Per bottle, per tablet. The pharmaceutical companies are making multi-billion trillion dollars every year 
by selling their chemical filled products. So what would happen if they said, well, you can buy our bottle of pills or you can go herbal? People would choose the herbal. So what then happens to the pharmaceutical companies? They go bust. Nobody's buying their chemicals anymore. So of course the pharmaceutical companies are not going to tell you, you know, you can get a herb for that. You can get an oil for that. Of course they're not. They're going to lose out billions of dollars, billions of pounds if they tell you that. So we all have a choice of how we address our bodies and how we address the pain in our bodies and what ails our bodies. Our bodies will tell us something's wrong. How you treat that is entirely up to you. I choose herbal every time. I've never had um, pharmaceutical medicines for years and I don't intend to start now. But that's my choice. Your choice may be, well, I don't really mind putting chemicals into my body. And it's a quick and easy fix. That's, that's everybody's choice. So, listen to our bodies. Our bodies tell us when something's wrong. Tells us when we're overtired. Tells us when we're not tired, etc. So, Erica, when you get that card, I hope that has meaning for you. Okay, Janae, what two cards would you like? We've got Unicorn or we've got Soul Truth. Do we still have Janae? She was here. Oh, I don't know what happened to Janae. Did Janae disappear? Janae, Janae, Janae. She was here. Okay, I'm going to do one of each for Janae and then we'll do a couple of questions and answers. So let's do a quick uh, one of each for Janae. So let me just check on my list just to make sure I haven't missed her name. Nope, she's definitely disappeared. Right, let's do a quick one of each for Janae. And then we'll do, we'll maybe do five questions and answers at the end. Because it is, what have we got, 2am my time, which is about five hours I've been doing readings, so, um, and I don't want to run my battery out too much, it's in, um, it's still charged, but we may run out of battery power if we stay on much longer, so, let's get Janae's two cards done. And then we'll do a couple of quick questions and answers before we finish tonight. All right. So let's do Janae. Okay. So I know Janae will catch up um, with these readings. Thank you for the gifts and the likes and the shares, everyone. Um, you are too kind. 
Pure Intention is your unicorn card. Find clarity and surrender to your ego. Yay, she's here. I've chosen one of each, but we can... It's up to you whether you want one of each or do you want two unicorns or two soul truth. Okay, that's what I picked. <laughs> we're all good. That's what I picked, one of each. So we're all good. So your first card is pure intention. Find clarity and send, surrender your ego. Sometimes we work with ego without even knowing it, right? We pass an exam and we think, oh yes, I know everything now. I, I, you know, I've passed this exam, that makes me, you know, experienced. It's like somebody um, sitting a driving test and they pass the test and they think they're king of the road, right? Well, they may have test, passed the test, right? But they've got a provisional for, for a little while, right? They've got a probational, right? Because they've still got to experience time on that road. But some people... I've passed, I've passed my test, right? And the first thing they do is break the speed limit because they get all excited and then they maybe have the first crash, right? They were working with ego. Yes, I've worked hard, I've passed my driving test, now I'm king of the road and I can go at 100 miles an hour and not think about it, right? And then they have their first crash. And then it's like, all right, that really did give my ego a boost, not, right? So they realise that yes, they may have passed their test, but they're still kind of wet behind the ears and they've still got a lot to learn about what could or could not happen on a busy road. So they have to then um, pull themselves in, pull that ego in a little bit and say, right, okay, maybe I don't know everything and maybe, you know, um, I should slow down a little bit and maybe I should be a little bit more cautious. Right. Um, and that, that can happen in any situation in life. Right. You know, um, a reader can do a reader's course, a tarot course, etc. And they think they know absolutely everything about tarot. And it's like they, they, they let ego get in the way and spirit will not work with ego. So the, the, the guy's kind of like, Oof, no, you're working with your ego. You're listening to your human brain and you're not listening to us. So we're backing off, right? And they usually get the, the readings wrong. So beware of situations where ego might try and sneak in, even if we're not aware of it, all right? So if we're good at something, yes, that's great. We're great at it. But if we keep telling, if we keep grounding ourselves and say, well, okay, I know this, but I don't know everything. And you know what? I don't even know everything. Right? That's what my guides are there for. Right? Um, I do these readings. It's not me that is giving you all this knowledge. I wish it was. Right? My head would have to be about three times the size it is to give you all the knowledge that I do. Right? But my guides are guiding me to what what to say and what the, the, the card means. That's not me. I'm trusting my guides to give you the correct uh, information. So would I, you know, I would be working with ego if I said, all this information is my knowledge. I've learned it myself. I, I'm telling you this because I know all of this knowledge. No, I don't. Right? TikTok has thousands and thousands of people that come to my um, readings lives. I don't know any of them. But I can confidently do a reading because I trust my guides. I listen and I take my time and I trust my guides to give me the right information that I need. And I don't work with my ego. So sometimes it's a case of, okay, what is real? What am I what should I be working at and what is ego? Right? What is spiritual knowledge? What is 
two, two um, messages that my body is receiving and what is my ego. And if it's my ego, I'm going to kick my ego to the side and focus on um, what my body and my guides are telling me. It's so easy to get caught up in ego, right? But we should never, ever um, work with ego. We should just work with source. Like we're, we're all spiritual beings having a human existence, right? When our life is over on this planet, we go back to spirit. Sometimes we are reborn again and we live another lifetime. But we always go back to source. We always go back to spirit. We always go back to universe. We go back to that um, golden cocoon of light. And each journey that we have is a learning curve because we don't know everything. The only thing that knows or the only things that know everything is our guides. It's the universe. The universe knows all the answers. And we can tap into that universe and that global universal knowledge that is out there. Does that mean that we know it all? Of course not. It would take many lifetimes to learn everything that the universe knows. So what we should do instead of working with ego is strive to learn something new every day. That's my kind of motto. If I can learn one new thing every day, I'm good. And that's what I do. I Google a lot or I read books or I read um some information on herbs or gardening or whatever it is that I need to uh, advance my knowledge. Learning something new every day takes you away from ego. Trusting in your guides rather than your human brain takes you away from ego. Right? If you pass exams and etc, that's just the beginning. Right? You're still relatively student-ish, right? Students that go to nursing college, for example, yes, they go, they, they may leave nursing college, right? But does that mean that they go into a hospital and become a matron? Of course not. They have to still work at ground level and work themselves up to matron or doctor or surgeon, right? They still have to work at the bottom and work their way up, right? Somebody that leaves nursing college and says, I'm going to be a matron now that I've passed my nursing, is working with ego. Somebody that's not working with ego that leaves nursing college is saying, right, okay, I've passed that, now I'm going to work up the, the, the ladder. Start off as um, a nurse and then work up as matron and then work up as maybe I want to go into doctors or surgeons. So I hope that has meaning for you. Your soul truth card. This is a question that we, we the, the universe wants you to ask your soul. What if it was easy? What if it was easy? All right. It doesn't have to be hard. Call in the universe, the stars, the angels, and all their powers. Find a solution. Would you take the next step if it was easy? Of course you would. It's time to expect ease. Call in grace and receive guidance because you are supported. A lot of people think that to be successful we need to take the hard road. Right, we look for the difficult path rather than the, seeing that there is an actual easy path to do it. Right? How many times do our parents say, you know, there's an easy way of doing that, but you just had to choose the hard way, didn't you? Right? You hear that all the time. Right? And we do. As a, as a human race, we just automatically think that to do something, we're going to have to pick the difficult route to do it. That's not always the case. If, the, if there is an easy option, take the easy option. 
takes the stress out of it and it's a lot easier to do rather than take give you more stress and take the difficult choice if you've got a choice between hard and easy and you can choose any one of them why would you choose hard and you might think we, we are kind of programmed to think well we must be wimps if we take or we mustn't we mustn't be intelligent because we're choosing to take the easy route so we'll take the hard route that will make us intelligent no that's working with ego right whether you take the easy route or the hard route, the end result is the same. You're still going to reach the same destination, right? It's like having a bike and two sets of instructions. One instruction is so clear it has the words and the diagram. The other instructions only has the words, but doesn't have the diagram. It's going to take you double the time to do the diagram less one and just work with the words but as it'll take you half the time doing the diagram with the words because you're reading and seeing how it goes in the first place but so many people say ah, I'm not going to follow that I'll just do it the hard way right because it make me look clever and the other person might say yeah well I'll just take the easy route Right, so the easy route takes them maybe 20 minutes to put that bike to, to, together. Three hours later, the one that's doing the hard route is still there, trying to work it all out. So why choose a difficult route and make it harder for you when you can make it easy? And this is the question. What if the thing you wanted to do was easy? Would you do it? Of course you would but some people would say no I wouldn't I would choose the hard way because that makes me more clever not necessarily right not necessarily it's like if you have to build something a DIY stuff right and you can either try and guess where all the pieces go which is really really the hard way Right? How many of us? How many of us give our men or our husbands or our partners something? Do you want the instructions? Do you? Ah, oh, no, I don't need instructions. And they build it, and there's like six screws left over. Well, why is there six screws? Oh, they must be spare. And then something goes wrong with it. Why does it go wrong? Because they never read the instructions, and those six screws were supposed to be in there somewhere. But because it wasn't in there, it fell to bits. Moral of the story is it comes with instructions. Take the easy route, read the instructions. So, as it says, it doesn't have to be hard. Call on the universe or the stars or the angels and all their powers. Right? If we don't know the answers, we can call on the universe as well. I always call on my guides if I don't know the answers to something. Um, find the solution. They will tell you a solution. Um, would you take a, the next step if it was an easy step? Of course you would. So it's, ex, it's time to expect the easy way. Call in grace and receive guidance because you are supported in everything that you do. I couldn't do my readings without my guides. Right? I couldn't come on and do my live readings without my guides. I need my guides to say, this is what this card means. This is what you tell that person. This is what the, the answer to that person's problem is. If I'm doing cards for myself, I'm usually asking the spirit, okay, this is my problem. How do I solve that? I need to ask my guides, I need to ask the goddess, or I need to ask a particular god. How do I solve this? Right? You've gave me a dilemma here, so how do I solve it? And if I look within, and I really, really look within, I find that the answer was easy all along. So, what is your action for your soul today? List 10 possible ideals for your soul's current calling. Lean into ease. It's here. You just have to say yes to it. So find 
10 possible things that your soul may be calling you to do. So it may be calling you to do more readings. It might be calling you to follow a, a, a spiritual path. It might be calling you to listen to your conscious, to listen to your gut instinct. It might be telling you that there's something wrong and you need to heal it. So list 10 possible ideals that your soul's current for your soul's current calling. Then find an easy way to do it. You just have to say, yes, I can do this. Yes, I can find the answers. The easy way to do it is if I don't know the answers, I'll ask my guides because my guides know my soul so much more better than me. That's the easy option to take rather than struggle with it and try and find the solution for ourselves when the solution lies with our guides and our angels and our gods and goddesses. Aren't the, ca the, the cards are awesome, aren't they? Um, I know a lot of people tonight, because I've been using these cards, I don't know what I did with the box, there it is, a lot of people have asked me what, what are the cards and where can I get them? The cards are um, Soul Truth cards. They come in a little box like this. And they are on my um, Hippie, uh, Hippie Life shop link. So if you go to my bio, click on my website. The first page on my website is my Hippie Life page. And at the bottom of that page is my shop link. If you are in the USA and you want to purchase from my store, especially if it's um, the soul cards, which I think are, I just got these today. I cleansed them so that we could use them in tonight's reading. I have loved these cards, working with them, and I know that everyone that's picked one of these cards are like, wow, I can so resonate with that. Anyone can use these cards. They have all the an, uh, questions for your soul on the front and the answers that you need are on the back. So each card has the question to ask your soul and the answer and how you deal with that. So you could use these every single day to improve your spiritual path and to help your soul on that spiritual path. Anyone can do this, it just doesn't have to be coming to me to get these cards. And I believe they are only £12 in the UK for this deck of cards. So, so valuable. Um, to me it's an investment in your soul. I will be using these a lot more in my readings for those that don't want the, 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 the deck, but um, I will tell you if I've bought something and it doesn't resonate or it doesn't work, but I, I think you'll agree that these cards have been mind-blowing tonight. Um, so if you found them helpful, let me know and I will use these more often. And if you'd like the deck... Um, then if you're in the UK, check out my um, Hippie Life website. <clears throat> if you're in the USA, you can still order from that website, but there's a different way of doing it. So message me if you want to, if you see anything on my um, Hippie Life web shop link that you want, send me a message if you're in the USA and I'll show you how to go about ordering it and getting your item. Um... So that is the end of tonight's readings. So we'll do five. <clears throat> we'll do five questions and answers. Yes, no questions and answers, and I'll just pick five at random. So if you have a yes or no question, roll up your questions on the screen, and I will ask my board for the answers. And I will pick five at random. Please type in capital letters. It helps me see your question a lot clearer. Um, because I am registered blind. So capital letters 
um, help me see the questions more clearly. Okay, let me just get my questions and answers board organized. And let's see if we've got some questions. Okay, is Simon my twin flame? Let's see. Oh, sorry, is Simosh? Is Smosh? Is it S M? Smoshy? Have I have I pronounced that right? Is Smoshy your twin flame? I hope I've. Um... Okay, thank you. Okay, is Smoshy Sandra's twin flame? Let's have a look. Okay, so let's have a look at the board. So this one is for Sandra. Let me move that water out of the way. Is Smoshy Sandra's twin flame? Is Smoshi Sandra's twin flame? Okay. This always happens with a twin. I I knew it was going to come out with maybe because as I somebody two or three people ask that same question earlier on tonight. Why do spirit say maybe? The reason that they say maybe to is this person my twin flame is because they don't want to say it outright, but what they actually mean is, well, if you're asking, is this person my twin flame? Well, the answer is probably no, because if that person was your twin flame, you would already know and you wouldn't have to ask the answer. There's, you know, if that person is your lifetime partner, it would probably say yes or no. There's a difference between a lifetime partner and a twin flame. A lifetime partner is very similar to a twin flame, but isn't a twin flame. A lifetime partner could be somebody you fall in love with and they stay with you all of your life because you get on so well just like a twin flame relationship you would get on so well the only difference between a lifetime um, relationship or partnership and a twin flame is that you are both relatively working the first time round on this lifetime right you didn't meet each other in a past life right so if you're a twin flame, you've lived a past life together with that, that person. And when you meet in this lifetime as the same people, you instinctively recognize each other's soul. Right? My ex-husband was not my soulmate. Neither was he my forever love, and I knew that. But I also knew my soulmate was out there somewhere. And we met in the most unexpected way. But within 10 minutes of talking to my now fiancé, I knew he was my soulmate. He knew I was his soulmate. It's just an inner knowing. I've seen you before. You've been in my life before. You're the one I've always waited for, etc. You just know. So... If somebody is coming to me and asking, is such and such a person my soulmate? It's always going to be, um, maybe. Because if you have to ask it, then the answer is no, they're not your soulmate, but they could be your lifetime partner. Okay. Okay, user. Okay. Okay, so user is asking, does he regret hurting her? Right, so okay. User would like to know, does he, does her partner regret hurting her? 
Does her partner regret hurting her? So this is for user. Does her partner regret hurting her? Yes, he regrets hurting her. So yes, he may regret hurting you. Okay. My cat is so cute. Um, I don't have a cat. I have a bird. I don't have a cat. <laughs> I have a bird, but I don't have a cat. All right. All right, no problem. Yep, he is your middle one soul. Definitely. Yeah, sometimes the board gives you something you don't expect. Don't get me wrong, there are men or partners out there that do hurt women and don't, um, you know, they don't regret it. But there are men out there that do regret hurting their women. Okay. Okay, did... Okay, Loretta, did my daughter lie about what she said today? Okay, let's ask the board. So Loretta would like to know, did her daughter lie about what she said to her mum today? The things that Loretta's daughter said to her mum, did she lie? Was it a lie? Did Loretta's daughter lie to her today? Okay. That particular question was a no, but... Um, It depends on what your daughter was talking about. If your daughter was um, asking a lot of or saying a lot of things, then spirit will automatically go to a, a maybe or a no if it's, a, if it's just one thing. Um, I could ask if your intuition is right about... Uh, okay. I'm going to put it this way, Loretta. Use your motherly intuition. What does your motherly intuition tell you? Does your intuition tell you your daughter was being truthful? Or does your intuition tell you your daughter was maybe not being so honest as she mays out she is? All right. Because it's quite an open, if your daughter was talking about a lot of things, that may confuse the issue. So, for example, if my son was telling me, oh, my dad passed away today. And I didn't know whether my son was just trying to make me happy by saying your ex is gone or not. And I didn't know the answer. Because it's only one thing that he told me that I wasn't sure about, but I needed to know the truth. I could then ask the board is my ex passed away? And the board would say yes or no. But if I was to say to the board, okay, my son told me X, Y, Z, A, B, C, um, all these things that he told me, were, was he telling the truth? The spirit's going to either say maybe or no because the spirit doesn't know. It doesn't know what particular thing that you're asking spirit to say whether that was true or not. Thank you for the roses.
Okay, was your daughter... All right. All right. So, was your daughter sexually abused by your boyfriend? Okay. Let's ask that. I might ask you. Loretta would like to know, was Loretta's daughter sexually abused by her boyfriend? Was Loretta's daughter sexually abused by her boyfriend? Okay, it's went to maybe. Right, I can understand why it went to maybe. Okay, when you asked, was your daughter sexually abused by... A boyfriend, was that her boyfriend or your boyfriend? If that makes sense. That's maybe why it's saying maybe, because it's not quite sure. All right, by your ex. All right, okay, it was your ex. All right. Okay. So I'm going to ask it again. Was Loretta's daughter sexually abused by Loretta's ex? Was Loretta's daughter sexually abused by Loretta's ex? Okay, the answer is no this time because it was a direct um, question. Uh, it was a, a more clear question. The answer is no. Now, I know that you've had truth and lie issues with your daughter in the past. So given that, um, the fact that you actually had to ask, this time round is my daughter telling the truth? Well, possibly no. If the if spirit have seen a definite no, then possibly no. Ultimately, we know our own daughter. I know that my daughter, for example, every word that comes out of her mouth is a lie, and she will do any. You know, at one point she would lie through her teeth to, um, you know, tell me that she was sorry, etc. And time and time again, I fell for her lies, and time and time again, I realised she wasn't sorry. She wasn't even repentive right so i knew in the end that it didn't matter what my daughter said i knew i couldn't tr i couldn't wholeheartedly trust her right we as mums know our own daughter wholeheartedly right um sometimes we don't like to believe that they would lie about something like that right we we, we just would not believe that um, so we tend to believe them and then later on we find out that that was actually just a ploy to get more sympathy or to get what she wanted type of thing from her mum. So uh, given the, the, the background, I would um, say that Spirit are maybe saying, you know, um, be cautious with this one. Okay. So, Bruno, okay, Bruno would like to know whether him and his wife will be together in five years' time. That's a long time, but we'll see. So, Bruno would like to know whether him and his wife will be together in five years' time. Five years may be a bit long for Spirit to answer that one, but we will see. Yes, you will be together 
in five years' time? It's a definite yes. Okay, we'll do two more questions and then we will call it a night. Okay, so thank you. Okay, does anyone have any other yes no questions? Before we call it a night. Okay. Hello, Fred. What was your yes, no question that you would like to ask? What is your yes, no question? So we'll use Fred's question as a last question and answers for tonight. But I am back on Thursday night with free readings for everyone. Thank you for the likes. Okay, so Fred would like to know whether his contract will end. Will Fred's contract end? Will Fred's contract close? Will Fred's contract, current contract, will it close or will it end? Close or end? Will his contract come to an end? Okay, it's saying yes. For the time being, it looks like the contract may come to an end. Okay, so I'm going to um, close tonight's readings at that. I would like to thank everybody. Um, Susan and Janae, I'd like to thank you for um, moderating um, tonight. I'd like to thank everyone that took part in tonight's readings. I hope you found the readings useful and I hope that they inspired you and gave you the guidance and assistance that you need. Um, tomorrow night I am doing a live at 9.30pm UK time which is 3.30pm CST time or 2.30pm USA time but it's going to be a meditation night. Wednesday night is always my spiritual chat or my spiritual event night. So it's not a readings night. So if you've ever wondered if you had a past life and if you did have a past life, who were you or what were you? What was your job? What people did you meet in a past life? Did you live on the country? Did you live in a town, etc.? If these are questions that you've always wanted to ask yourself and you don't really know the answers, join me tomorrow night. I'm going to be doing a guided meditation that's going to take you back to your possible past life. Now, during this meditation, there are three doors to three past lives. Now, you might be a person that's only lived two past lives. So only two of those doors will open for you and show you what your two past lives were. You may even just have had one past life before this lifetime, in which case only one door will open. Or you may have had three or more, in which case all three doors will open into different past lives for you. We did this past life regression um, previously and people were getting really, really amazing results with it. So um, if you've never meditated before, I do guide you into how to meditate, how to cut off from the human brain into the subconscious brain, which is the meditative state, 
and then we take you into that past life and then bring you back. If you don't come back, chances are you fell asleep. Your body is so relaxed it's fallen asleep. It's not the first time people have fell asleep doing my meditations. Does that mean that your meditation failed? No, not at all. Right? Your meditation gave you exactly what your body needed. So if you're doing a meditation and you're feeling tired, chances are you're going to fall asleep. All right. But if you're not tired and you're joining me for meditation, you will probably see the meditation right through to the end. So if you're interested in that, join me tomorrow night. Um, Thursday night is my free readings night. Friday night, we're doing gift readings again. Saturday night is subscriber only reading. So if you're not a subscriber, when I do my live on a Saturday, you can watch the live, but you won't be able to comment um, or take part in the readings because it's only subscribers that will be able to comment and take part. If you've missed any part of your reading tonight, this will be downloaded onto the Lady Moonlight YouTube channel. You'll find the link to that on my website here in bio. If you go to my bio and it hasn't got a website link, please do not follow that account because it's a fake. There are a lot of fake accounts going about. My account will have over 9,100 followers and it will have a clickable website link. A fake account will not have a website link and it will have a hell of a lot less than 9,000 followers, all right? So if you're following me and you get a message from somebody that looks like me on the profile and they're saying, uh, I need 200 pounds or 50 pounds for a reading, um, I believe I can help you with a reading or would you like me to do spell work, etc. And it's not me. I will never PM you, ever. I don't have to, right? I don't have to jump in somebody's PM box to give them a reading. I just show up every night and do readings. The people that want a reading will find me, not the other way around, right? I'm not money and money orientated, right? People come on, they enjoy my readings, they give gifts if they want to. If they don't want to give gifts, I'm good with that as well. But I will still come on and do my readings regardless. All right, so... Um, I will never DM you. I've always got a website link on my bio and I've always got over 9,100 um, followers on my website. So if it's not got all of those three things, it's a fake account. Please don't get caught up with scammers. Um, I would rather um, all my followers stay safe and we beat the scammers together than my followers get kind of pulled into a fake account so always check for that website because that's the one thing scammers cannot copy is a website link right especially my website link right they can't duplicate it that website belongs to me and me alone right so if it's not got a website link with the gypsy with the hippie gypsy um which on the website it's not me don't follow it all right so stay safe out there. There's a lot of scammers going around um, TikTok trying to steal my followers and uh, trying to take your money in the process. So stay safe, right? Let's beat these scammers together. I will always call a scammer out, always. Especially if they've got my name and my picture and my um, steal some of my, my uh, videos. Well... To the ones that are thinking about scamming me, good luck. Because every live that I do, I will tell my followers, look for that website link. Look for 9,100 followers. And if I jump in your DM box, it's not me, it's a fake account. That's how you know it's not me. Some of my previous scammers have even wrote on my their bio, I will dm you for money and readings i would never put that on my bio i never have because i've never had to all right so please be safe out there um if in doubt message me um and if in doubt just check my bio to see if it's got a website link 
all my schedules for this week are on my bio on the pinned post. So if you want to know when I'm next live, what I'm doing on that live, check out my bio, all the information's on there. Um, if you're wanting um, to know, if you're wanting to purchase the, the, the cards, because I know there's a lot of people wanted to know where do we get the um, Soul Truth cards that I've been using tonight, if you go to my website, um, and it's the first page, it's got my hippie um, shop link on there. If you're in the USA, message me because there's a different, you can still order stuff on the website, but there's a different process of um, getting that order through. So if you're in the USA and there's anything on the Hippie Life shop that you would like, let me know and I can help you get a USA basket set up for you so that you can still access these because Hippie Life do deliver to the USA as well as the UK. But if you're in the UK, just go to the website. Anything you want on that website, just put it in your basket and go through the checkout. Um, delivery is usually really quick unless the website tells you. If you're ordering clothing, some clothing can take um, 15 to 28 days. Some clothing can take up to 10 days delivery. But it does state it on the website if you're looking for the clothing. All right. So thank you all for joining me tonight and I will see those that want to join me tomorrow for past life uh, regression meditation. I look forward to doing that with you all tomorrow night. Till then, love and bright blessings everyone. Take care. Have a great Tuesday. See you all tomorrow.